Welcome to Film History, the history of film. I'm James. And I'm Drake. And I'm Devin. And we're the hosts of Film History, the history of film. Each week, we take a deep dive into some old Hollywood history that you've probably never heard about. But it's not like your high school film class. We're cracking jokes and goofing off the entire time. It's history told our way for all audiences, from the ill-informed to the savants of cinema. Yeah, we tell you about James Cagney almost getting his head blown off because, well, you know, back in the 30s, you were allowed to just shoot machine guns at your leading man. And wait until you hear the episode about Waterworld. Or how the world's first vampire movie was made by real occultists and some Nazis. And there's plenty more little-known Hollywood lore out there, legends and facts. So if you join us every Wednesday, wherever you listen to podcasts, I promise it'll be a good time. Yeah, you're going to love it. You're going to love it. Just look for Film History. The History of Film! You've been this. there? You heard about this? Have you heard about this optometrist? I, I this? think the optometrist is the most psychedelic doctor. Okay. Uh, but by the way, uh, Tyler Armitrade, history boy here. I was at the optometrist <laughs> today. and Well, because <laughs> the whole point of going is to like stare into lights. Mm-hmm. Where oh, like yeah. a, where like well like a old man mumbles at you and then like throws a bunch of blurry stuff and things are blurry and not <laughs> was it blurry. An old man? Yeah, it was an old man. Oh, cool. I haven't had an optometrist, and I go to a lot because my eyesight's. You know, some dog shit. Yeah. Uh, I wear contacts. Uh, and Chris Whedon, history boy here. Um, and every time I go, and I don't, I don't mean to be insensitive, it's just literally true, and I've loved every one of them. Every single optometrist I've been to in the last, like, 20 years has been an Asian woman. Every single time. Oh, I had a because humorless I, old man. Oh. I think his name was, like, Irving or something. I'm like, oh, Irving. Mm-mm. But he didn't look that old, so I was like... They still make Irvings? No. Uh, no. He, uh, Not anymore. He, it's a dying breed. He posthumously took his father's name. He, he's, mm. living a, he's living a an unnatural long life due to his optometry, uh, I don't know, fucking ten rings? Magic. Yeah, well, and then, once you, you, well, and then once you get done and they give you the dilation drops, mm-hmm. it's a race to blindness to try to pick out frames. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> and I'm like... But I spend so much time staring at the rack. I'm like, tap out makes frames. Should I get tap out frames? Is it worth the bit to have tap out frames? <laughs> it's not worth the bit, dude. <laughs> and, then, <laughs> and then next thing you know, you're too blind and you still got to choose some. So you choose the most bland, broad frames possible because yeah. it's the only ones you can see. Oh, I, 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 I wore shitty fucking frames through all of like, well and through high school <laughs> because I couldn't wear contacts and my eyesight was so bad I couldn't see what I was picking. So they just yeah. look. I look like an idiot, yeah. and my lenses are very thick. So I was a bit of a Millhouse style character. Oh. Mm. Lots of pussy, but uh, <laughs> but uh, you know, I've always loved cats. You know hey. what I'm saying? You know, those, yeah. you know those glasses that uh, Robert De Niro wears at the very end of Casino? Mm-hmm. That's the kind of frames I want if I ever need glasses. They're those big square. Yeah. Oh frames. yeah, yeah, yeah. I want, right. I want the like frames. the Frank Reynolds. Mm-hmm. Yeah, 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 yeah. Those thick. Not quite the same, but I yeah, know what I mean. yeah, thick frames. Preferably with a bit of a fade in there. Oh, you gotta have the fade. Because I got sensitive eyes, you see. Mm. I do too. I have very sensitive (laughs) eyes. And I lost my last pair of, uh, my favorite pair of sunglasses on a bit of a night out. Ah. You lost them to drunkenness. So who are the other two people here? Uh, I am a man about town, uh, Zach, uh, 2020 vision, uh, mech. Piece of shit. Um, (laughs) Fucking show off. Did I say I was a history boy? I am a history boy. You Um, are? Yeah. I've seen it. Yeah. I've fucking seen it. I believe Did, you. Have you though with with your vision? I got contacts in. All right, I'm just making sure. <laughs> I don't. I can hear it though. <laughs> yeah, like, something's going on over there. <laughs> and I am Jerry Nash, your humble history boy. Thank you so much for joining us as always, and through this series. Thanks for sticking with us through this one. This one's gonna be a little rough, gentlemen. A little mm. rough. Yeah, a lot of uh, ins, a lot of outs, a lot of what have yous. Yeah. Mm. Uh, there's good guys are hard to find towards the end here. Yeah, where have all the cowboys there's a lot gone? Of, yeah, where have all the flowers gone? I need, uh, a, I need a hero. 
We're just gonna reference all the songs. This song. Oh, I was just saying I need to hear like a sandwich, like a yeah, grinder, a hoagie. Mm. I just want a sandwich. I want a big oh, old sandwich. sandwich. Yeah, yeah. Um, I got some uh, French hoagie rolls in the fridge. Ooh, I'm just gonna stuff it with some fucking salami. Yeah. Oh, oh Christ, what are we doing today, Jerry? Well, this is Hila Selassie Part Three. Now, last we left you, Hila Selassie made his triumphant return into Addis Ababa. And the British army helped liberate Ethiopia from the fascist Italian occupiers after five years of Italian occupation. Things are looking up. Uh-huh. And, and marched the last guerrilla fighters in chains through Addis Ababa. When, when they were, when they finally like got like the last of the stragglers, like they straight up like chained them up and marched them in front. But like, like chain gang style? Well, like almost like Roman triumph style. Oh, like, okay. Like, marched him in front and never like it was supposed to be like a rejoice thing but everyone was so fucking tired and burnt out from this ex- existential struggle that it wasn't happy like no. they just sort of like watched in silence as like these you know dirty like bedraggled Italians were marched through their city in chains so like, uh, fucking whatever and yeah. it's just like yeah. like they were just sort of out of emotion they didn't have you the know juice. What I mean. See, yeah, I, I can kind of relate to that. Uh, I just got back from Riot Fest, and uh, day four, like I was. Yeah, it's just de- like this. Dead mm-hmm. quiet during Devo's set. Like it was, should have been a triumphant thing right. to witness. But the funny thing I'm is, so Devo tired. was actually playing during the, this thing as well. Yeah. Oh, whip it. Yeah. <laughs> Mark Mothersbaugh is old. Yeah. 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 No. Uh, yeah, they were just. Uh, I mean, out of national energy is a. Uh, is, is an understatement. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Out of national energy. Yeah, yeah. yeah. We're getting uh, there, guys. Oh, <laughs> yeah. I know. I'm like, <laughs> all is not well in Denmark. <laughs> to Fuck! use uh, to use uh, William Shakespeare's quote here. Mm. Shatner. Uh, yeah. <laughs> the British even called it occupied enemy territory. Hylas Selassie is like, you know, this is not occupied enemy territory. I'm here yeah. again. Right. Yeah, you mm-hmm. know what I mean. Like this is no my to you guys. territory. Yeah, right. Well, you just finished the job the Patriots did and right. took all the credit, yeah. and then Hila Selassie took all the credit again. Mm-hmm. So like, when he points the finger at the British, he kind of does the same thing, and you'll see this is this is sort of how he's a sign of the times of how Hila Selassie is going to operate going forward. There's a lot of irony that's going to show itself mm, okay. uh, going forward. But yeah, the British controlled also Eritrea, the once Italian colony. They controlled that area as well, which is the seaport, remember? Mm-hmm. Right. Um, and uh, Italian Somaliland and the uh, Ogaden, or the Ogaden, which is in the east of Ethiopia. And keep in mind that uh, the people of the Ogaden are mainly Somalis. Mainly mm. Somalis. Okay. There's not a lot of Amharas there. There's, there's, you know... Because what we... What we sort of forget when, when we talk about, like, the Italian invasion is how decentralized Ethiopia is. It is still an amalgamation of a lot of different ethnicities and nations. Right. It's a bit um, like New Mexico. Mm-hmm. You got, uh, no. I feel like you got like a strip mall and then you're driving on the highway for 30 minutes before you see anything else. <laughs> and then another 30 minutes. Well, and the whole Southwest is that way. Yeah. Arizo- just, Arizona, it, Southern California. It's just towns built around a Walmart. Well, we'll, yeah. we'll, we'll, uh, <laughs> yeah, it's not at all like that, but we'll get into an, into that whole issue. Anyway, well, how um, else are you supposed to praise Walmart? Yeah. But, but for a while, at least for maybe a moment, the light of justice and goodness showed itself in Ethiopia. Okay. Right? I mean, yeah. yeah. Allegedly. Wrong. Fuck! Wrong. Why'd you set us up like that, you piece of I shit. I don't know. I don't know. I just Wait, do. It's for the story. He, he hasn't told us about a drunk guy yet. No. <laughs> yeah. He's um, trying to get back at me for calling him Jeremy on Discord. <laughs> <laughs> I just didn't. I was like, is, is this a bit? It or? was. Everyone was like, happy birthday, Jerry, uh, Jerry. And I thought it would be funny, me being one of your closest friends, to be like, yes, happy birthday, Jeremy. <laughs> I got it. <laughs> I, I, mean, I got it, but I was like, is he, is he referencing something else? No, I didn't know what you were joking about. I just about. thought your good friend not knowing your first name <laughs> was the, that's the bit. Like, that's uh, the joke. Uh, 
Yeah. It's like Jeremy, right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah no, it's good. I got it. You'll get bits like that and so much more by signing up for our Patreon and getting onto the Discord so you're going to see all the japes and hijinks that are going on and over there. Yep. Yeah. Anyway, back to the show. Because history, uh, you know, especially in Ethiopia, is never that simple. Never, never that simple. Guys, and we're gonna get we're gonna get into it. Why did you have to make it so complicated? Skater boy, <laughs> you skater boy, skater boy. skater boy. Now Britain, during their occupation of Ethiopia, because that's really what it was, they treated Ethiopia with condescension, like mm. children that couldn't be trusted to run their own country. There was a lot of natural resources and things that the Italians had built during those five years of occupations that they took advantage of. And uh, ransacked, to be perfectly honest with you. They took it, and that was that. And, this like, is... they're like, oh, so you're just going to take that? And they're like, yeah, 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 we'll pay you back later. Yeah. And then when they never did and they demanded their money, they're like, I never told you I'd pay you back later. <laughs> did, uh, <laughs> did the Italians build, like, infrastructure and stuff? Uh, a, a little bit, yeah. Okay. yeah. And, and I they, was just thinking yeah. of the, like, Monty Python, where it's like, what did the Romans ever do for us? Yeah, right. yeah. <laughs> well, it's the aqueduct. <laughs> Yeah, well, what that joke displays is all of the good things Rome had, had done, but uh, the Italians did build some railroads and whatnot, and some, like, mines and shit like that. But the thing is, is, like, all those natural resources, and, and, and there was, like, steel laying around that could be, could have been used to help sort of rebuild Ethiopia and modernize Ethiopia was taken by the British just because they could. We built you all these roads, and we know how much you guys hate canaries, so we built you these mines. <laughs> <laughs> Don't worry, this canary died of natural causes. <laughs> yeah. Back into the mine! <laughs> <laughs> well, how, how can a country hope to modernize or, or anything like this? What, what Hylas Lost is planning to do if they keep getting, you know, robbed, basically, by by anyone who claims to be helping them. Right? I mean, you just uh, unilaterally pass, like, a $3 trillion infrastructure package. Yeah, Jerry. Well, he tried. Mm. Um, but we're, we're also going to get into that. Real quick, after the Yalta Conference, after the, the end of World War II, a very frail FDR mm. uh, and his daughter actually went to meet Haile Selassie. I guess that... FDR did most of the talking, and he even mentioned to Haile Selassie that France shouldn't keep their colony in Southeast Asia anymore, meaning mm-hmm. Vietnam. So the groundwork of the Vietnam oh, War is being laid Jesus right Christ. now. Right after the end of World War II, the groundwork of the oh, yeah. Vietnam War is yeah. being laid. And that's a story for a different day, because there's people who are, were our friends at this time, uh, because we were trying to help, that would turn against us because we all America ever tries to do is help yeah yeah exactly uh, for ideological reasons we decided not to he gave him uh, FDR gave him some uh, command cars and uh, was on his way and the British because they were like hey that's the Americans like on our stomping grounds we can't be shown up by the Americans mm-hmm. so like they're like is there anything you want to talk to us about and how the Selassie's like no, no. Like, we you got- can fuck off anytime yeah, you want. Good. You can get the fuck but out of here. No, no. And so Winston Churchill insisted on a meeting, Ugh. and he goes over there. Hylas Lossi, he he wants a unified Ethiopia, so he's like, you know, you got to give me that Ogaden back. Winston Churchill was like, where? <laughs> uh, he he didn't know. Yeah, and <laughs> and it, it, that was one of the last places they did let go of. Um, it's way Trump in Puerto Rico. Yeah, just oh no, no idea, God. no idea. It's like, and and they gave him a Rolls Royce because they couldn't be outdone by by the Americans. And it's like something. this is so fucking stupid. Makes you because they're like focusing Bond. on yeah. like the wrong things, you know. Mm. Well, technically, if he wanted to make him feel like James Bond, he would have given him an Aston Martin. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, what true. Fucking car um, anybody drives. But the Rolls Royce, I hope it came with a mechanic because. Uh, pff- those things upkeep alone is insane. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yep, yep, yep. More than my mortgage. And I'm sure, I'm sh- sure it did, but, but here's the thing. Hylas Selassie, basically, he was telling the British, like, all right, just give me all of it, and I'll look after it. It's going to be the empire of Ethiopia, and I'll, I'm going to fix it. I'm going to rebuild. I'm going to modernize, and that's what we all need. That's what we want. And he wanted a national 
Ethiopian identity, mm -hmm. which is a pipe dream, yeah. because it was never that way. Mm -hmm. Because the thing is, is going as far back as like the mid 1800s during the time of the princes, even before that, early to mid 1800s, the time of the princes, that's when the real colonization by Ethiopia began against these other nations within mm -hmm. Ethiopia, right? Yeah. And something that they realized when Haile Selassie left, right, because there's a lot of people that still didn't forgive him for leaving during their darkest hour. Right. They realized that they didn't need Ethiopia. You know, they needed them. They needed each other, right? Oh. Well, mm -hmm. their own kind. You know, their own kind that that the fought and, and whatnot. Right. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> well, the Tigray. You know, in, in Tigray, Oromia, these places. And so, when he's like, "All right, I'm back. Let's all make one big Ethiopia." They're like, "Hold on, just a second here." What the fuck have you ever done for me? You know what I mean? I feel like right. ethnic tribalism in the face of uh, of a leader trying to uh, homogenize the entire population always works out super well. Right. I can't wait to see where this is going. Right, mm -hmm. exactly. And, you know, it, it's the way he viewed it was like, they don't share my vision. And and you're just uneducated and, and you don't know, so I'm going to do what's what's good for you. You know what this sounds like You know what I mean? mean? Fascism, a little bit, a little <laughs> bit. Well, keep in mind this is feudalism. Mm -hmm. Right. This is a emperor. This is right. a dinosaur. You know what I mean? It didn't really exist in this time. You know, it only existed here. And having the death of feudalism in the 20th century it would have massive consequences. And it did. You know, you could live under an emperor, or you could get on a plane and fly to the other side of the world and have an ice cold Coca Cola. It's weird. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. And didn't the Coca Cola end uh, pr police brutality? It didn't. No, that was Pepsi. That was Pepsi. Mm -hmm. yeah, that's right. Mm -hmm. but, right. You know. Yeah. Yep. All uh, they wanted was a Pepsi. The power of sugar water. Mm. Right. Now remember, Hylas Lossi believed, as well as the Amhara people mainly, Ethiopia is not a great place to generalize. So there's always going to be, well, it's not totally true. You know, there there's some spillover, you know. Yeah. Whatever, but mm -hmm. mainly Amhar has believed that he is from the fucking Solomonic bloodline, right? He is the rightful, you know, emperor to the throne, and this is the right person to be ruling Ethiopia, you know what I mean? And people believe that 100%. But the truth of the matter is not that simple, because during the time of the princes, all of the Rosses that controlled all these different areas claimed Solomonic bloodlines, mm -hmm. right? Sure. It's not just him. It can't be traced to just him. So, like, there was a Tigrayan emperor in the early days of, of you know, the 1800s early days where this really stems from, you know. So, the thing is, is that they've been sort of shitty to each other. Every time, like, one of them's holding the big stick, they've been shitty to each other yeah. because... The other one was shitty to each other. Right. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So it's a back and forth, and, and it doesn't stop. And the thing was, is Haile Selassie, you know, over four generations of Amhara, you know, Amhara rule was like, this is the way it's going to go. We're going to speak Amharic. You know, this is the way it's going to go. And if you don't see my grand vision, then you're part of the problem. I just feel like that seems, you know... Well, like, Romeo, uh, uh, Romeo was, was independent before, like, all of this began. And, again, they have their own culture and language. So they wanted to separate. Tigray wanted to separate. You know, these, these places wanted to separate. Eritrea didn't want to be a part of Ethiopia. Let them yeah, all we be got their own, own countries. And yeah, we got our own thing going on. Yeah. yeah. Well, we'll, we'll, we'll kind of get there because this is still what's happening today. Okay. The, mm -hmm. the, the, this is still an issue today. This ghost sort of haunts hey, us. If it wasn't for those guys doing what they're doing now, everyone could just, they could have just bought a map in like 1940 and it'd be the same map now. And these guys in the former Soviet yeah. Union, they like to mix things up, man. Oh, yeah. Rand McNally fucking loves these guys. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus. Yeah, just keep, keeping, uh, just keeping us on our toes. Yeah. Because, yeah, in, in, in Hylas Selassie's mind, the only way to modernize was to do this. 
The only way to be like the superpowers was to do this. Anyone that stood in in that way was just a part of the problems that his country has always faced. Now, if you ask them, it's a different story. They've mm. always been subjugated, because they have, mm. you know. So, keep that in mind. Bear that in mind. I know how they feel. Yeah. As a white man in the United States. Yeah. Well, <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Being ironic. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You yeah. haven't met uh, his wife. Yeah. <laughs> I thought we were doing it. Yeah. The war, uh, the history would prove to Haile Selassie to be careful what you wish for. Oh. Yeah. You, you know what I mean? And he wished uh, for, uh, I don't know, it's like a monkey's paw, you yeah. know? Yeah. He yeah. got a genie from a lamp, then used one of his wishes to wish for a monkey's paw. And now I, things are going... That's a solid idea. Because the, then it, <laughs> it's you, skirt around the, uh, you skirt around the, uh, the curse. no multiple wishes. Yeah, that's true. And instead you have horrible flip sides to all your wishes. <laughs> well, your second genie wish is that they there are no flip sides to you. To your monkey paw wishes. Yo. Right? Yo, now you're using the that. monkey paw you're using have the noggin. same rules. So it's like then and you can wish you can wish for people to love you, you can wish for people to be killed. Well I don't know what else there was. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Uh, you could wish for more wishes. I mean you gotta go wish for another monkey paw. Oh yeah. Or just wish for like a super rare monkey paw that has like nine wish for another fingers genie. on one hand. Just make it all fingers. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> I want a freak ass monkey that. paw that's just, still magical, but he's got like monkey fingers. Yeah, 50, 50 fingers. He's got fifty fingers on one hand. I don't. You figure out how the bones work. You're the egghead. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. uh, you just I, I, my my first wish is that everywhere I, I everywhere I walk, I step my I stub my toe on another genie lamp. <laughs> <laughs> now the patriot groups who had fought tooth and nail to expel the Ferengi invaders. That's what they call white people. Mm. Ferengi. The Ferengi. Not the Ferengi. The Ferengi. <laughs> no. The Ferengi. They now found themselves sidelined by the British, of course, but by Haile Selassie, you know, where he took a lot of the credit because he rode in, you know, and it was, you know, it is he, his whole they thing. felt ignored because they had been fighting for the past five years yeah. and they thought, they, they, they believed that he had ransacked the treasury and that he had stolen a lot mm -hmm. of money. They believed that Italian oh, yeah. propaganda. Then he shows back up in a Rolls Royce and he's like, guys, listen to me. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, like, talk about a series of I'm unfortunate back. events. Oh, yeah. <laughs> well, yeah. I yeah. want to hear this narrative by uh... Patrick Warburton. Yeah. Putty. Yeah. yeah. Do a putty impression for the remainder, Jerry. No. Okay. <laughs> no, I'm not going to. You're not going to support the tube? It's <laughs> pretty good. That's pretty good. It's not bad. It's my impression of Jerry doing that impression. <laughs> <laughs> and, and that's I, spot on. Yeah, that's spot on. And yeah, it, it really it stung because the way they saw it. What did what did Ethiopia ever ever do for them? You know what I mean? Nothing. They, aqueducts. They <laughs> no aqueducts. They were constantly sidelined by the Ethiopian government and by the Italian invaders. You know, it was up to them. It was their it was their guerrilla fighting force that that made it fucking happen at mm -hmm. the end of the day. You know, but like you didn't do shit, dog. Yeah. So why should I? Why should yeah. I listen? What you know, that's what, right, yeah. what the fuck were we fighting for? Were we fighting to live under feudalism again? Oh, rad. Oh, yeah. great. You know what I mean? Cool. And, yeah, that makes sense. You know, so they were disillusioned, and and the thing is about this feudal feudal system is that the rich elites and and everything they controlled you know upwards of 70 percent of all of the land in ethiopia mm -hmm. and and then the, of course there were landlords there's a tier system right mm -hmm. it's like a pyramid scheme that's what feudalism is and at the very bottom you know you have people controlling the least amount of land they mm -hmm. probably controlled about two percent the actual people living there controlled two percent of ethiopia's land oh so it's like a funnel right yeah okay. right exactly yeah and they were tired of it because all their food fucking went to their their feudal overlords, right? Rather than feeding their communities that needed it the most, especially the ones that were that were the most they were the, they were the most vulnerable to things like drought and famine. If you don't have the infrastructure in place to mitigate some of these problems, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and the thing was, is Hylas Selassie was kind of caught in between a rock and a hard place because he was like any progressive thing I try to do like he tried to do like a progressive tax and the rich elites were like 
no, you can't do that because we want to go back to the the salad days of of feudalism, huh. and uh, we don't want to give away any of that money and power. So Mitch McConnell was there. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, I knew he was old, but I didn't know he was Ethiopian. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus, it's that Sith energy. Yeah, and and so he keeps like, well, I gotta I gotta placate the royals because they're closer to me. And it just seemed like all of his political maneuvering was out of date. And mm-hmm. a lot of people even said, like, if it's Hylos Law, like, they sort of apologize a little bit for Hylos Lossy, and they say, like, if if he did anything wrong, it was just living too long. Mm-hmm. And it's like, I mean, yes and no. You know, that's an easy thing to say, is, right. what, is what I would say, you know. He's, he should have changed. He's, he's like, I can't tax these rich people because I'm going to see him on the golf course next Sunday. Yeah, kind but of. I can't do anything for these poor people because then they get mad at me. He should have just uh, changed his name, faked his death, and lived somewhere else as like Henry Salzberger. Yeah, <laughs> and then invented that Salisbury steak and got all that. Money. <laughs> there you go. Rebels against Tyler Selassie's rule popped up almost immediately. Like when he showed up, they were like, "Oh fuck this! We're not going back to this." Yeah. yeah. He's and like, so, you guys don't want to go back to uh, servitude, basically. Forced servitude. Yeah. yeah, I mean, he ended slavery. Great, I mean, isn't, but the isn't, feudalism isn't, is pretty much slavery. Yeah, yeah. yeah. it's, it's just, economic slavery, absolutely, in yeah. every sense of the word. And uh, they weren't satisfied, so they, you know, they went into rebellion, into Gry, in in some of these areas, and the British and uh, the Americans helped put these things down. They gave they gave them money. They give him military support. Hyla Selassie pointed. They pointed the gun, basically. Mm. It's like, Selassie, get it, get it together. The man. best thing about this kind of behavior is it doesn't, you know, ripple through history forever. And, and ever and ever <laughs> and ever. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, it's not like, you know, every nation in this world is dealing with things like this. Yeah. From the past. Yeah. Now, now when the British finally did peel its fingers off of Ethiopia, which it took several years before they finally gave cool all of it hands, yeah. to to Hilo Selassie, regular Charlton Heston. Yeah, it, it was given. It was given. Yeah, as pieces and sort of a little bit at a time, and all in different sort of circumstances. So it's like right the guy who ate a bus. The guy, right? Who, right. The guy in who, pieces. You can't eat yeah. the whole thing all at once. You got it. Digest each one. At, at, well, that's what the British were telling them. Right, yeah. That's and, it. The, the British explain to them like that. They go, you can't just eat a bus. And they're like, what? And he's like, the, you know the guy go, who ate a bus? And then they're like, what? And he's like, all right, you got to see this YouTube video. Yeah. <laughs> they, they <laughs> to, go with, to go with the metaphor, though, eating an interior of a bus would be a lot different than eating the engine, though, wouldn't it? He ate the exterior of the bus, too, from what I understand. Yeah. But but that's Smaller what I'm pieces. saying. That's what I'm saying. That, that the important chewing, part. Chewing on... on on like the seats on seats would be different than chewing on the engines so wouldn't the, it yeah yeah those. so so going with the metaphor Eritrea was in a much different position than other people that were disaffected right mm-hmm. so like Eritrea was was given its own governing body um its own its own parliament its own procedures the UN uh they all voted like hey we're going to give we're going to federate Eritrea with Ethiopia. Mm-hmm. And basically, Eritrea can, can govern itself, but uh, Ethiopia kind of looks over their shoulder. They, they control their finances and their military and, like, the big So which things. part is the engine? Is the finance and military? And- yeah. I don't know. Whatever is the hardest part. That part. <laughs> yeah, sure. Oh, it's yeah. the important Whatever. part. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. If your bus doesn't have an engine, it's not going anywhere. Yeah. It's true. And then but, you're just on the streets in Ballard. But the thing was, is just the Eritreans the Eritreans didn't want to do that, and they were never asked, right? Yeah. No one said, hey, Eritrea, what do you want to do? And yeah, right. No one ever say, asked. I would, I would like have to been like, a full bus. Yeah. Yeah. They're like, we'd like to be a full bus. We'd like to be our own sovereign nation. We don't want to eat a bus. We want to ride in one. Yeah. We're like, I don't... They didn't understand the metaphor. They thought <laughs> <No>. they, had, <laughs> <laughs> they actually had to eat a bus. And they didn't... They're like, why is Britain going on and on and on about buses <laughs> yeah. all the time? Just like our, uh, our 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 fans at home are probably thinking about us right now. <laughs> yes, exactly. <laughs> but once the British basically pulled away, that's when all the trouble started, because like Afghanistan, because there was the Ogaden that that wanted to be a part of Somalia. The Ogaden, the Ogaden, mm. or right. the Ogaden that wanted to be a part of Somalia, and then there was the 
there was the Yafars that, that wanted to be their own state. There was Oromia that, that always considered themselves their own state. There was Tigray that wanted to be their own state, right? All of this just sort of happened at once, you know, and rebellions started popping up and again with help of foreign powers, he was able to put it down in in military fashion. Why I do want to keep that in mind. Just be like chill about it. And be like, yeah, because like, he's the emperor. He is the he is the lion of Judah. His bloodline goes back to the Solomonic dynasty. He is the emperor. He's not he believes pretty this. groovy, man. He needs to chill out. I think he just needs to like just mellow out and be like, hey, if you want to <laughs> join Ethiopia proper, what time period is this now? This well, is this like, this is in the forties and into mm. the fifties is where we're going. So they didn't have the. What was that song about being groovy? You know what I'm talking about? Uh, Are you talking about groove is in the heart? Because no. that came out in the 90s. No, fuck no, I'm not. I'm like talking about that being groovy. That was D-Light. I don't care who that was. It was probably I, in the 60s. I don't know. You, oh, was that one of the slide whistles? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Did he have a slide whistle? It probably would have helped. Yeah. yeah. Mellow. <laughs> yeah. Like, it's just so crazy to me. Why doesn't he just fucking chill out? Because of, cause you said... In a previous episode, this is kind of the birth of like the Rastafarian. Well, well, yes, movement, uh, correct. Yes, and and keep in mind, Haile Selassie does not believe in the Rastafarian movement himself. Sure, yeah, that's sure. very clear. That's now. very clear. Yeah. But but also, otherwise uh, he'd be smoking those jazz cigarettes. Oh yeah, he's never smoked a J in his life. Yeah, uh, let me tell you that. Yeah. But the thing is, is uh, the way he believes it, the way he sees it. Is one Ethiopia, right? Right. It's it's nationalistic in that sense. Mm-hmm. Everyone else ha- has never felt Ethiopian, right? Except for maybe Amharas at this mm-hmm. point. Right. At this point. So he he's later the second from uh, God Emperor of Dune. Yeah. Okay. He he is okay. the God Emperor. Or I read at least the first views one. himself that way. I'm um, excited for the movie. He, I mean, he's the he's the Lion of Judah, man. They believe that you know he believes this about himself. Sure. And. I mean, there's no reason why he shouldn't believe this about himself. You know what I mean? He's always been told this. Like, I'm yeah. the Lion of Judah. Did you see the way I ran away and then came back with a bunch of other guys? What other yeah. option did he Lion have? Lion of Judah. So what other did, option so did he have? the same thing. I'm, that's true. This like, is, like, this? See, the, like, there's no fucking good way out of any of this. this you can't, like, you can't. You can't placate any decision making. Well, here. you can't be. You can't be asking for handouts. And ordained by God. You know what I mean? Like, you'd think that that would humble him and be like, hey, man, I'm going to kind of... It takes a village to make a country. No, no, he is ordained God by God, so you must listen to me. So... But he's ignoring his Islamic uh, population, which is very heavy, you know, like... And these other populations, right? He's ignoring certain things. So basically, his family crest is that of a lion... That is running off into the distance behind no. a rock. No, At his the end fam- of the first his, act. Of his family flight. crest yeah. used to be on the flag of Ethiopia. <laughs> okay, it's right before he meets Timon and Pumbaa. Yeah. It's, it's a lion. That's, that's the lion uh, he's talking about. Okay, okay. Uh, Timon and Pumbaa are, I guess, the English. <laughs> They're uh, American reporters, I would say. Mm. <laughs> okay. uh, yeah, or English reporters. They do remind me of the the the. The guys who uh, brought down Nixon. What were their names? Uh, Woodward oh. and Burns. Yeah. yeah. Yep, yep, yep. All well, the presidents. Man. Yeah. I like Dick. Well, I mean, I, I don't think this is the place to <laughs> be, uh, you know, uh, the, the having movie. that revelation or sharing that revelation with us. But, uh, you know, we support you. I feel no honored. What you want to do. It, and it had, uh, had Will Ferrell in it. Yeah. It's a good movie. Oh, Okay. I see Dan Hedia is actually an underrated uh, Richard Nixon casting. Oh, have you seen that movie? Uh, no, it's not great. It's okay. I know that you've uh, watched, you've listened to the director's commentary for that movie. Though. I have. That's amazing. Now the rest of the world, however, saw a m- very different picture of Hila Selassie. Very different picture. They saw the dignified emperor restored to his throne. Of Ethiopia after these Italian fascists invaded and like Zimba. and these horrible, you know, and they, you know, and he became a globe-trotting diplomat, and that's sort of what they saw. You know, they they saw him going to all these countries, meeting with all the heads of state, you know, and and being fair and and 
di diplomatic to every single one of them. He talked with everybody. He went all over the world, and he was almost universally adored by the leaders of the world. And that's what people saw. He, he sent troops to fight in the Korean War. Did you know that? No. What? Yeah, Ethiopia Whoa. sent sent troops at, uh, to fight in the Korean War. There is a memorial in Korea that, that commemorates Wait, which the... which side no did he send shit. troops? On the Allied side. Okay, good. Oh. Yeah, against the communists. Just yeah. double-checking. Whoa. That's crazy. Yeah. Yeah. He's minorly instrumental, which is a bit of an oxymoron, but never mind. But he is partially responsible for the birth of uh, K-pop. Is he? I, I suppose. Yeah, I if if it wasn't for the Korean War shaking out the way it did with the North and the South, South Korea would have never been such close allies with, with the West and, and America specifically. And because of that, they, they wouldn't have developed in the way that they did and influenced by Western culture, which mm -hmm. spun off. Indeed. That's fair. That's fair. I'm yeah. just disappointed that they didn't... He's directly uh, responsible for reggae. Or, or not reggae, but... I know. Uh, the the modern reggae, I should right. say. Right, uh, I'm just disappointed that uh, Mash shot. never uh, had an episode <laughs> uh, with uh, the Ethiopian troops. Well, they were probably ignored because uh, of racism. Oh, that's right. That's yeah. a thing. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, keep in mind. <laughs> yeah, it, uh, the, actually, the Ethiopian troops were on Mash. They were uh, body bags in the background. Jesus! Oh, so, like all those guys were Ethiopian. Dark. Anyway, back to the white people stories. <laughs> yeah. Jesus, it gets darker from there, though. <laughs> he, uh, damn it. Ethiopia uh, joined the United Nations, the newly formed Ooh. United Nations. Uh, he was a proud member to join. He even made a, an extremely famous speech to the United Nations where he was like, you know, I, I I came to the league, I asked what the fuck you guys were gonna do, and and that failed, and I have high hopes for what this is gonna be. Yeah. The UN, also uh, known as League Two Electric Boogaloo. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, it's, it's when all the nations of the world have to get together and break dance to save an orphanage. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus Christ. Because that is what that movie's about. Yeah. Yeah, but he uh, he also helped create. He was one of the instrumental founders of the African Union, which is like the UN but for Africa. Like the um, E Union. Yeah, like the EU except for Africa. He also strived for Pan Africanism, which is kind of like it's an it's an idea that has been in the works honestly since Marcus Garvey of this idea of all of Africa's actually together. Mm -hmm. You know the, that that. It, it's it's a wonderful idea uh, of bringing all Africa together in sort of one mind. It's a bit of a pipe dream, uh -oh. and we're gonna absolutely we're gonna really see why here in a second. It's gonna be harder and harder to see the dream of Pan Africanism as we move forward, right? Mm -hmm. Because it's hard to talk about Pan Africanism if you can't treat your own people in as equals, mm -hmm. right? Right, yeah. When you start banning their languages, when you start banning their culture, when you subjugate your own people the way Haile Selassie did to the Romos, to the mm -hmm. Tigrayans, to, to the Afars, it's hard for them to really grasp the idea of Pan-Africanism. You know, yeah. it seems a little... Wouldn't they, couldn't uh, they view that... Disingenuous. In this case, like, the idea that, like, Ethiopia is trying to bring them all under one banner. Right. And it's like, well, that's just even a bigger banner you want me to be a mm -hmm. part of now. Yeah. A little bit. Couldn't they just bit. take a page out of America's book and just say that they're a uh, cultural melting pot but uh, have a deep-seated undervein of systemic racism? Oh, why? They've yeah. been doing that. Okay, cool. All right. So only, they're on the, yeah. at least they're on the right path. <laughs> They've we're been all, doing that. We're all doing that. <laughs> yeah. Uh, except they wouldn't blink. I mean, well, neither did, <laughs> did America, I guess. But they, they didn't blink at... at Oh, you don't like that? Yeah. Mm. Fuck you. You know, and then, you know, fuck it's violent. You. Yeah. You know, right. when, I, when I say fuck you, I mean, it's violent. People die. Yeah. You know, and, and in horrific ways. So in a lot of ways, they're more advanced than us. They got there way before we did. Honestly, you're, you're, you're more right than you probably think. <laughs> you're, Jesus. You're more right than you probably... You think America's divided? You ain't seen nothing yet. Mm -hmm. In 1963... Haile Selassie addressed the UN 
and reminded them of why this body exists, remind them, re reminded them of their duty and, and what was necessary to, to be a step in, in modernization of the world, you know, to, to be the sort of web where uh, nations could come together with their disputes and they could lay them on the table and have nonviolent means to an end, right? Mm -hmm. And he reminded them of how important this was to world peace and disarmament of nuclear weapons. And equality. This the was world in 63? Over. 1963. Is Kennedy I'll, I'll, there? I'll, I'll, get, I'll get to why this is important here in a second. Because he was going to get killed soon. That's what yeah. I'm now, let me know, actually, if any of this sounds familiar. Because chances are, you're going to recognize this part immediately. This is from his speech he gave to the uh, UN 1963. Quote, On the question of racial discrimination... The Addis Ababa conference taught to those who will learn this further lesson. That until the philosophy which holds one race superior and another inferior is finally and permanently discredited and abandoned, that until there are no longer first class and second class citizens of any nation, that until the color of a man's skin is of no more significance than the color of his eyes, that until the basic human rights are equally guaranteed to all without regard to race, that until that day, the dream of lasting peace and world citizenship and the rule of international morality will remain but a fleeting illusion to be pursued but never attained. And until that ignoble and unhappy regimes that hold our brothers in Angola, in Mozambique, and in South Africa in subhuman bondage have been toppled and destroyed until bigotry and prejudice and malicious and inhuman self-interest have been replaced by understanding and tolerance and goodwill, until all Africans stand and speak as free beings, equal in the eyes of all men, as they are in the eyes of heaven, until that day, the African continent will not know peace. We Africans will fight, if necessary. And we know that we shall win, as we are confident in the victory of good versus evil. End quote. Ooh. You might recognize that from the exact lyrics, almost, almost, to Bob Marley's song, War, where he lifts almost exactly verbatim those lines from that. Because right? mm -hmm. he was Rastafarian, right? Yeah, uh, he loved Hila Selassie. I'm not a um, big reggae guy, so. But like, as he's delivering this speech with these very high-minded ideals, he's like, "But like, all that's true. But also, like, if you're in my country and you're not falling in line with what I want, mm -hmm. then ironic. I am going to subjugate you, and mm -hmm. I want to erase your cultural heritage and your because language." Because he, he doesn't believe they can get it. Yeah. Even he believes that they don't have the capacity to do so. So they're just empty words. They were just pretty empty words that he was saying. Yeah. Well, yeah, it's like, wouldn't it Some be would nice say if that, we yes. could do that? I mean, I, you know, I listen to him saying that, and I'm like, he, I mean, he's right. In yeah. the literal, yeah. the literal, what he is saying it is true. Like, we, right. until everyone is free, no one is free. And it's... Yeah. It, uh, my, my thought with Ethiopia is... Honestly, with any nation, uh, you're only as good of a nation as how you treat the, the, the least of your population. Mm -hmm. You're only as good as that. Like, like I agree. You know what I mean? Uh, they, I mean, this rule applies to a lot of things, but it's, I feel like it's especially true uh, when running a nation. That the way you treat the least of you are the mark of how actually good you are. Oh, absolutely. Right. And the fact that when you say the least of you, you know exactly who you're talking about. Right, like exactly. It, you in know what I mean? Like time and place. It's like, like in Seattle, like... There's the, a reality that must be enorm dealt with. The enormous homeless population, I keep keep hearing people say, like, we need more sweeps, you need to, like, the police need to well, get you need them to out Elliot there. Like, it? Where are they going to go? Yeah, yeah where, where are you going to put them now? It's like, what is, the, what is the cause of the... Like, oh, they're just... They're NIMBYs. And then people are like, oh, yeah. sorry, I don't mean to go on a whole thing, but they're like, oh, there, there's a labor, there's a labor shortage. They're all just lazy. And it's like, bullshit. You That's don't bullshit. pay people a fucking working li yeah. a living wage. And so they want to look for, they, there's systemic problems what, what that they're are doing, at fault here. What, what is happening is they're realizing they don't need the rich, right? Uh, to mm -hmm. exist, mm -hmm. right? It's a lot like what 
people in Ethiopia right now are realizing that what has fucking Ethiopia ever fucking done for us? Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And they're realizing it now too. There's there's sub uh, subsections of our society that are realizing like that are constantly disaffected that are realizing what has America fucking ever done for yeah. me? Mm -hmm. You right. know what I mean? Our situation is much different from theirs, I, and I don't want to equate them too much. I do want to make that no, clear. No, I think that there's... But the overlap of realizing when you're disaffected, I think, is the important part. Yeah. Realizing that, hey, maybe your leader leaders are maybe failing you mm -hmm. are, are, is something that is, is important for some societies to realize. Now, another thing that sort of added to his worldwide sort of grandeur... What is that? <laughs> ...was he visited Jamaica in 1966 and this is where like the world really knows they know him from this uh Haile Selassie he visited there because they loved him there he was a messiah there oh I bet he loved that it was it was the biggest uh Rastafarian population in the world you know they they in he Jamaica? was met oh yeah he was met with throngs of people and he you know of course he was very he was a dignified guy right were he, he didn't themselves at him. He didn't, he didn't say, yes, I am your god, hello. He was like, thank you so much, you know, uh, you, so know you all mean, yeah, oh yeah. yes, you, you mean a lot to me, thank you so much for doing this, you know, da 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 da. He even opened a place in Ethiopia for Jamaicans to live, for Rastafarians to live, and they do to this day. Mm. They haven't actually, <laughs> sort of another ironic part, is that they've never actually assimilated into Ethiopian culture, really. They, they live in their small enclaves, and they pretty much keep to themselves. They just hang out, listen huh. to dub reggae, smoking weed. That's pretty much Sounds what badass. it was. A nice. lot of them thought that Hylas Selassie would never die. In fact, there are a few that don't believe he is dead. Ah, I knew it. And there are a few that are like, well, I never saw his body, so it's not a thing, and we're going to yeah. get to that. But uh, he, He's hanging out with Tupac, it's fine. Yeah, yeah that's what I was uh, thinking. <laughs> he's uh, hanging out with JFK Jr., uh, taking out the cabal of elites with uh, yeah, right. former President Donald Trump. Mm -hmm. <laughs> some, some people, though, some people, though, when Hilo Selassie did die, and we'll, we'll get there, did convert or change. And keep in mind, R Rastafarianism is not centralized. It's not like the Catholic Church. It's not right. centralized. So... Not every Rastafarian believes in the same thing, okay? And I don't want to generalize again. But what I am saying is that there are some people that don't believe he's dead and still worship him as a, as a messiah. And some people that have changed Rastafarian, uh, Rastafarianism to mean mental decolonization. And this is something that we in the West, especially white people, will probably never understand. Mm. Uh, I, at I least do. today. I get it. Uh, no, you don't, <laughs> Tyler. Shut the fuck up. Uh, but but that's what it's sort of come mm -hmm. to mean, especially especially in the West, using Haile Selassie as an emperor that is is sort of this idea of mental de decolonization, or especially around the lens of what it means to to live under a white capitalist colonizer to try to get away from that lens and looking at the world through that lens was very important to them and uh, cannot be understated. This is also something that is happening in Ethiopia right now because only for the opposite reason, right? They see they see Haile Selassie as the colonial master, right? Right. And they have mm -hmm. to free their mind of, of colonialism. So it's when it comes to Haile Selassie, it really does depend on who you ask, whether or not you like him or not. You either love him or you don't, d depending on who you ask, right? Mm -hmm. uh, white people doesn't fucking matter. Yeah, I was going to say, yes, yeah, like, white person, they're like, who? And, and the reason why is because of, of white supremacy, right? right? Uh, is because, oh, you see a black emperor as a white person doesn't mean anything to us, mm -hmm. right? Because there is something in uh, the way we're taught about history and the way we're taught about certain things to disregard black leaders, Right. This cannot be understated be, just just because of the way we have we were never even taught about the the Ethiopian invasion or the mm. in, invasion of Ethiopia. Very important things to talk about uh, and, and and stark reminders of what history could have in store for us or any nation mm -hmm. that is that is divided and polarized. It really is. And, kind of uh, scary, actually. Yeah. Yeah, seriously. <clears throat> Our, our history class is propaganda. Yay! Right, right, right. And and not just the South. No, no. 
Oh, white people in general. Mm-hmm. Like, keep keep that in mind. Like, there's a thing why, again, why in the West, Hellas lost is revered, even though he had his faults in Ethiopia. And they think of him differently in Ethiopia than why we, we look up to... we Everyone knows who Winston Churchill is. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know white. what I mean? Yeah, exactly. So keep that in mind. White supremacy, no matter how liberal you are, lives in your brain because of what uh, because of how you were taught mm-hmm. history. There is no escaping. The best you can do is is learn about these uncomfortable facts of history, and and that's what we're here to do. And we're just about to get into when the shit fucking hits the fan here. Now, gentlemen, moving forward with the story, I'm not going to claim to be an expert on this because there's so fucking much, you know, there's so fucking much. There's, I can't generalize. You're giving us, right? you're giving us the 101. Yeah, I'm giving you the 101, right? I'm giving you broad There's a lot more to learn. Here. There's so much more. There's story. so much more to learn here. And you can look in our source notes for that material. And I do encourage you to go learn more about this because it is important. It is important. Do your own research, guys. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it is true. It's true. But like in this case, we're serious. Like, find there's tons of. Real... I'm always serious about that. No, but I mean, usually when people say do he's, your own research, he's doing they a mean... vax, an anti-vaxer. Yeah. Right. Okay. Like I, I, I saw a guy. I on don't YouTube. mean look at JPEGs on Facebook and then say that you did your own research. No, Actually, no, no. go out, read a book, read a book. Yeah, but uh, we don't know what's in the vaccine. Except they literally, when I got it, they gave me a list of what was in it. So. Yeah. You also don't know what's in your fucking shampoo, but you rub that shit on your on, on yourself all the time. So, yeah, I, uh, hypocrisy. Zebra anyway, gum. One, one of the, the, the key things, uh, especially with Eritrea, was that uh, they would have their own constitution by 1951. A constitution that would, that would put them underneath the Ethiopian protectorate. And they loved that. They didn't love it, but what they did is they, they were going to deal with it for a bit. Mm-hmm. The thing was, is basically right at 1950 and 51, Oromos were fighting for their own independence. Tigray was fighting for their own independence. The EFRs were fighting for their own independence. And Eritrea, of course, was also doing so. And they, and they would become in earnest 10 years later in the early 1960s. Uh, for their own independence. The reason why is because, meanwhile, Hilo Selassie's trekking the world and giving these uh, grandiose speeches on equality and, and how we're all together in one and, and everything. They're, they're fighting to be independent because in the early 60s, uh, 1962, Hilo Selassie decided to annex Eritrea, unilaterally so. They dissolved the Eritrean parliament they dissolved their entire government, their constitution, and it was going to be Ethiopia now. Yeah. This is that totally deep, mine now. It was deeply unpopular. You thought rebellions were bad in the 50s. They'd be even worse in the 60s. And it showed the rest of the world like, oh, shit's not actually going well. You're deeply unpopular now in the 1960s. So that groovy song probably is out by now. Well, yeah, well I mean, they're past that. See, the thing is, is... Rebellions in the 50s, yeah, you're doo wop into the fucking, you know, like chubby checker or whatever doing the twist. Uh-huh. It's easy to put those kinds of rebellions Jesus down. Jesus Christ. Now they guys. got real anti war music because, you know, they got like CCR and stuff. Jesus and so now they get, Christ. now they're in like, you know, Jimi Hendrix and Bob Dylan. And so they're going to be way better at in revolting. the West. Everywhere else, he's viewed completely differently than within Ethiopia, within his own country. Keep that in mind. Hmm. So in the West, you know, We're like, get him! It's like, yay, Harlo Selassie. There, because of the way we view it, mm-hmm. right? Because we don't, we don't have to go through mental decolonization. We, right. don't, ha- we don't have to do that. We have to deal with that. We us, are us, the colony. Us, us white people <laughs> that view ourselves as some sort of <clears throat> superpower Wait, that controls the world. Even right? CCR? <laughs> even CCR. Oh. Uh, CCR can't be an ant because they are the ant farm, yo. Oh my I god! Don't know what the fuck you're talking about? I don't know what that meant either. But um, the, col- the colony, oh, the col- yeah. like the colony, you can't be a, you can't be colonized if you are the colony, man. Oh, so that's CC- yeah. CCR is the one bringing us all down. Yeah, Jesus Christ, you guys. God, you y'all just sound like fortunate sons. <sighs> yep. So for two decades, I thought that was funny. No one can see 
Halislaus's vision of a one Ethiopia. You guys just don't get my vision, man. Much less, much less of a of a Pan African vision. They can't they can't see it within inside of his own country because of how he's treating them. Right. right. And I think like he's how how would he fit into a Pan African vision where it's like if that were to be a thing, it's not like he would be running Africa. Well, maybe he thought that, maybe he didn't, yeah. but he was instrumental in creating the African Union, so maybe he he at least thought that he would have a seat at the table. Oh, you know right. what I'm saying? Right. He was like, I mean, if you had a leader, you right? Know? Yeah. Well, well, I mean, or 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 an amalgamation of leaders, like the UN, right? Like it would be an amalgamation of leaders from all the different mm-hmm. countries, and he would certainly have a seat at the table with his one Ethiopia, right? Does that make sense? He's yeah, like, sure, Africa yeah. needs a strong sense. leader, not me, but like a Halle Selassie style character. Really <laughs> united. Yeah. yeah. In the somewhere around the late sixties and, and the early seventies, there was a drought and. Uh, across across Africa, uh, there was like a band of drought that went across Africa, and it really affected the northern provinces of Ethiopia probably the the most. And and of course places like the Ogaden, uh, these places really felt this drought. And because they've had a generation of fighting constantly, because they all view themselves as their own nation. It's hard to build a country. It's hard to build infrastructure and do this. Uh, it led to famine. Mm. Mm-hmm. And a big famine where people starve to death simply because there is no food. There's no food. So what time period is this? Early 70s? Early 70s, late 60s. Okay. They, can't, they can't grow anything, they, or they can't grow anything fast enough. And then mm. the people that, that could are fighting, right? And is this, this is uh, like that desertification shit. It's that happening here? The what? You know, like when they, they're kind of just growing the same thing and it kind of ruins the land. Uh, is this happening? They need no, to rotate they're, they're, their crops. No, no, no. They're, they, know, your bonds. they know what they're doing. They know what they do. they, they've been doing this for generations. Okay. Uh, the thing is, is that when there's no one to sow and plow the fields and when the government won't own 70% of, of, everything nobody wants uh, to work anymore well it's hard to get the food to the people that need it when all of the nobles and whatever control everything right Right. so there's people that are like hey wait a minute i'm giving all my fucking shit to you and i'm seeing nothing everyone's fucking dying people are dying Uh, we we are we are out of food we have nothing to feed our people you are getting all the food right because mm-hmm. you own the land, and we have to give you the food now. So, and and now we, we're fighting, so now there is no food. Even if we wanted it, we couldn't get it. I was Because it doesn't exist. It was like when the French elite were like, yeah, we could uh, change the way things run, but then we wouldn't party all the time, you know, right. before the French Revolution. Though. Yes, yes. There are shadows, there are mm-hmm. shades of that in this. There's um, a lot of similarities between almost any revolution. Yeah, Where it's yeah. like... Some people are being treated like shit, and they're giving everything to these people who mm-hmm. are basically just mooching off of, like, 90% of the people. Right. And it it creates a boiling point, right, where it just, it, it can't, it can't live, right? And and there's a lot of people, during this famine, and it, it was a full-blown famine, during this, it is argued, it is discussed to this day how much... Hilo Selassie knew about the famine. Did he know about it and let them starve because they didn't speak the language? And, well, if you're not going to speak the language and you're not going to obey me, why would I help you? You know, it, the, the constant tit for tat has, has done a irreparable damage. Or were they country. like trying to say they were starving, but he's like, I don't, speak, I don't know what you're saying, man. I, well, I don't speak your language. He's like, yeah, that'd be a convenient excuse. <laughs> Clearly. <laughs> yeah, yeah. What, what at least is clear is that anyone that said anything about the famine either didn't say it loud enough, didn't make a big enough deal about it, or they didn't, and or they didn't care enough. They were a lot too of things, hungry to speak they, they loud. Were, they were ineffectual yeah. leaders, ineffectual so leaders. You know how hard it is to, like, do anything when you're hungry. Yeah. You know what I mean? 
if you go and watch, uh, so the the BBC in the early seventies put out like investigative journalism mm-hmm. uh, documentaries. Oh, remember investigative time. journalism? There, there are some people that that called it later. They called it misleading because uh, they, they intercut people waiting in line for food that they're not assured to get mm-hmm. and dying in line. And this is stuff that like when you watch it, they're like, "This man is going to die. There's nothing we can do for him." This building. We set it up so people could sit inside while they die. There's nothing to do for them. And, like, the the dude, the British guy that's, like, there with his camera team, he's, like, so he's standing in all these people waiting for food and with a doctor, and he's, like, so when do these people need food? And the guy's, like, now? <laughs> like, fucking yesterday? Right. He's, like, eating a and, sandwich. He's, like, this is fucking rough, bro. <laughs> <laughs> you do get a sense of that, but, but like... I imagine he, it's a meatball sub from Safeway. Like, yeah. the meatballs are falling Subway, out. yeah, yeah. yeah. And uh, they're going after the meatballs, like, no! He grabs it. Picks it out of the door. Oh, he eats it. It's dirty, but he eats it. <laughs> so they can't. But, like, all the questions he asks are way like that, where he's like, what do they need? And the dude Fucking lists off... food. Well, the dude lists off calories, protein, carbohydrates, and... Food. You know, food. Food. <laughs> you know, food. And he's like, what happens if they don't get it now? And he's like, they will die. Oh, oh, okay, okay. Now, now, now explain it to me like I'm a five-year-old. Yeah. Well, that's pretty much the questions. He's at a five-year-old, you know, questions that he's asking. And he's like, yes, these children will die. These, these women, because, of course, this is a part of the world where they do practice, you know, uh, female genital mutilation in, in certain uh, nomadic so areas. why don't they just eat those leftover pieces? <laughs> Jesus! <laughs> Whoa. What? I just figured you were trying to connect the dots here. I fucking... <laughs> I hate you so much. I hate you so much. <laughs> they could do the male cut-off piece. They could eat all... Cut off everybody's Being genitals. Being cannibals, that's all I'm saying. There's so much food if you just cut it for everyone's genitals. Are, are you doing the, uh, the, the, oh what, what is that, the indecent proposal or, or whatever, where they're uh, like, why don't they just eat uh, the poor? Modest proposal. Modest, modest proposal. proposal. Indecent is uh, a million dollars for a night with your wife. That's right, yeah. <laughs> modest proposal is too, eat the poor. They did that too, but... Uh, well, no. I'm sure the guy was like, I'll give you a night with my wife if you give me some food. Just give me some fucking food, man! No, no one was gonna eat each other because they had a little bit more fucking human decency not than each that. other just and not cannibals. a lot of meat they had more decency than they had meat on their boats what about their legs they're not they don't eat those oh jesus christ okay i'm sorry cut all that out we're not cutting that because we are clearly speaking mocking the oppressor i hope so yeah we uh, are and if you anything you cut out you could always feed to them because they're really <laughs> oh god damn it I'm sorry i'm sorry <laughs> just fucking it's way let them eat cake like i'm not allowed to grab onto anything i guess no. all right oh, god. <laughs> to anyone who was offended by that joke i need to explain to you that we are mocking the idea of the ruling class just being like, oh, it's easy. Just cut off your genitals and eat it. That's the joke. I'm not even saying that's what they're saying. <laughs> no, we are taking it to the next level. That is the joke. And if your job is to give color commentary on a comedy podcast <laughs> and you see jokes just laying out, you take them. Yeah, yeah you do. <laughs> you do. You do. At the expense of everybody. <laughs> uh, yeah. People don't want to listen to us Mine's anymore. for you, dear, dear listener. The jokes and opinions of Tyler don't reflect the opinions of History Boys Limited or any of its <laughs> subsidiary subsidiary corporations. Oh, we've got so many. Because <laughs> we have so many. <laughs> Anyhow. No, I encourage you to go watch uh, those documentaries because it is a reality to the people that live there. Or, or, or did, because the circumstances have certainly changed. But, but the thing is, is um, these documentaries... The the reason why it was they were accused of being manipulative mm-hmm. is because they intercut people starving to death with Hylas Lossy feeding meat to like li- his pet lions mm-hmm. and like having lavish birthday parties. And the thing is, is they're like, well, he normally ate pretty humbly, mm-hmm. and it's like, yeah, but. Wouldn't one of those steaks that he fed to his fucking lions be cool? It's like that super sad yeah, documentary. You know, you know what I mean? And it's yeah. like, and the thing is, is it's hard to look at people in lines and like a maze, waiting for food that will probably never get it. That will probably die where they sit, and don't have the energy to stand 
and look like walking human skeletons. It's pretty hard to rectify those two things. Mm-hmm. Whether or not it is manipulation. It's it's hard to sort of be like, okay, but you're emperor, huh? And you own most of the land, and okay, you're doing what's best for them, huh? You know, it's hard for me to look at those two things and be cool with those images, I guess. Mm-hmm. He's no you better than I mean? that sub-chomping journalist. <laughs> <laughs> it was like, whoa, oh, right. It's a callback. Yeah. It was a good call yeah. You could have fed the genitals of those lions to people. Come on, that's funny. <laughs> I just don't know I'm, if they're boys. This is a fuck. Well, you know, either way. I'm sorry for making jokes on a comedy podcast. I know, here. I know, I know. I know it's fucked up. I know. People are going to get bored and fucking leave if you well, don't uh, talk about make dick jokes the whole time. I mean, yeah. it's, 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 or it's, dick it's, eating jokes the whole time. We've so, all well, well, there, it's, it's mainly female circumcision that, that is the thing here. Clit yeah, that's really jokes. <laughs> uh, there, there are veiled women among these populations that uh, can never show their face and, and have female circumcision done to them because yeah, of fucked. their backwards beliefs. And Hyla Selassie never tried to get through to those tribes because they are notoriously uh, evasive, uh, uh, reclusive. Right. And I wonder why. <laughs> yeah. You know, but... Because uh, the shit's fucked up? Our last president, Donald Trump, I'm pretty sure it did know a lot of things that were happening. In the and he was a horrible president. Yeah. He didn't... Yeah. I mean, he didn't... How many presidents have to know that Puerto Rico is part of the United States? All of them. Every single one. Every uh, single yeah. one since... We started doing occupied. Our, it's like telling yeah. people to take horse mescaline for uh, COVID or whatever. It was. Horse mescaline. <laughs> <laughs> That's a deep cut. With joke all, there, with all due respect, a deep cut joke. He, a, he never told anyone to take ivermectin. He no. did tell them to inject bleach. Yeah. Which one's more uh, effective? I, I, you know. I took so many parts of that and put them together, and then added our own thing with the horse mescaline. Yeah. And uh, I'm very proud of uh, that joke, and it makes sense to literally, probably you two. Yeah. yeah. Either way, leaders uh, don't have any reason to fucking feign ignorance. No, uh, when it's happening in your own country, there, there's no fucking reason <laughs> well, the other why thing you is shouldn't it's like, know. The it was a cover up. A, the, it was it, a cover up. The ignorance right. itself is a problem. Yeah. Yes. If you were truly ignorant that there's a fucking famine in your country, yeah, it's either you're ignorant. That's almost worse. It's either you're ignorant or it's a cover up. I think it was a cover up. Because if you're ignorant, how could then you you're be incompetent. incompetent that? Yeah. Like, you're yeah. an ineffectual leader. You got to yeah. go. Yeah. Yeah. You, you, you can't not know that. Yeah. You would expect that he would have went to the UN since he fought tooth and fucking nail to sit at the seat mm-hmm. of the UN. and. Well, he to... didn't. Keep in mind, the patriots of Ethiopia did. Right. That's something important that we have to know here. Okay. You know, he had his moments of glory, but. And. and he always felt that he should sit there. You know so what I mean? So the Patriots are the ones who... Are really the ones that did it. You know, yeah. again, the British finished what what the Patriots had started. Mm-hmm. Right. Right? They'd fought for five years. Yeah. Five years against the Italian fascists. You know, blowing up buildings, hit-and-run tactics, shit like that. And we pretend that, that the British and General Napier, and which who I didn't even fucking mention... Yeah, Jack Napier? Uh, no. Uh, General Napier... Uh, that these people and and the the Gideon force and these people are the ones that that engineered Ethiopia's liberation, which is a half truth. If you've asked, if you're asking me, oh, it's kind of like uh, what, what we're taught about America finishing World War Two. Exactly. Yeah. 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 It's a half truth. We finished it. We didn't win it, but we finished it. So what happened? Because nobody fucking liked that. There was a famine being covered up, and millions were dying, <laughs> and perhaps being let you know, perhaps Hyla Selassie was letting them starve. We mentioned that thing in the uh, the, the Fallout Four thing where it's like everyone disliked that. Yes, <laughs> yeah. yes, that's this. There, there were. Remember when I told you that Hyla Selassie sent all these other people abroad to be educated abroad, mm-hmm. right. all over the globe. It was sort of a downfall in a lot of ways because when they came back and they saw these things happening, they, they had been educated and they were intellectuals from abroad. Mm. They came back with their own ideas and 
it is it all of this is a cautionary tale to literally everyone because they came back with these with these leftist ideals to fix the country in a very leninist way right oh, very leninist go. way of i know what's better because i'm the educated one you are living out in the fucking desert you're the rabble i'm the educated one this is exactly what the problem is with liberalism in the United States is that, uh, one, everybody has different ideas, but then being like, things need to change, and I know better than you. Yes. Right? And I'm going to do a it. a lot of rural yeah. areas in the United States, they take that personally. Because they have lived experience. Mm-hmm. And the thing is, is when you look down on someone's lived experience and you, and you marginalize their lived experience and you pretend like they don't have enough experience to have a say Mm -hmm. in what happens it's a problem yeah it's a problem that's why people fell for that asshole donald trump well because they wield that ignorance no they do like a weapon Mm -hmm. and and they give you and they and they poison your mind in in america at least not not necessarily here but they poison well sort of here but they poison in a different way here they poison your mind and wield you like a weapon yes. for power. That's right? exactly what It's happened. a different motivation here than it is in Ethiopia. Uh, and, and you said that uh, he, he, he was leftist in, in the form of, like, Leninism, you said? Uh, a, a group of, of lower-ranking sort of officials, military Some officials, of things like this. Some of the people to be educated about Yeah, these war. intellectuals, they got together. They were lower-ranking. They got together. They called themselves the Dirk. Okay. Derg means committee. Cool. Okay. They were the committee. They they got together and they decided they didn't want Haile Selassie anymore. Right. They wanted to live in the leftist uh, Leninist utopia, and okay. they were going to make it happen in Ethiopia. And uh, this is one of the re- many reasons why I hate the Beatles. <laughs> <laughs> How so? Okay. Do they have a song about the Derg? Well, I mean Lenin, right? Oh, for God's sake! Oh, okay. No, V. I. Lenin. <laughs> yes. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Shut the fuck up, Donnie. <laughs> what? What I am the walrus. Yeah, I am the mul- I am the walrus. I am uh, the walrus, dude. Yeah. 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 Uh, it's the, that's the second Big Lebowski reference I've caught in this in this, this discussion. Today. Yeah. We didn't call uh, attention to the first one, but yeah. Jerry made it. There was uh, still the war with Eritrea, uh, who were fighting for independence for mm-hmm. Eritrea. And uh, I'll sort of get into that a little bit more in depth here in a second. The Derg basically, uh, they were like, you know, they rose up, right, in rebellion, of course. Mm-hmm. and Like you do. Yeah, and they became pretty powerful. They, they, they got some of the groups involved, some of the groups, I should say, pieces of the group involved, to many groups involved, to overthrow Haile Selassie. And have fun getting through those lines. They're well, well fed. Well, what, one of the few things you need them to be. One of the first things yeah. they they did was uh, uh, when they captured him, they had Yoko Ono sing. <laughs> <laughs> they showed him the British documentaries that I was talking about that mm. are on YouTube that you should all go and watch. He's uh, like, hey, my lines are on TV. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus, uh, and they were like. Is is this what you mean when when you talk about Ethiopian unity? Is this what you mean when you talk about Pan Africanism? Cool. And I I guess Haile Selassie Ooh. went Ooh. into He's pulling my collar. He went into moments of complete silence and reflection. What a lot of people were like, I've never seen him act that way. Like he he was absolutely troubled because how could you not be of the images he was shown? That tells me he may not have known or turned a blind eye to what was happening there on the ground, actually, in reality. Because the thing about Ethiopia is whenever, like, especially in the West, like, it's either Haile Selassie, all sunny and good, or it's people with flies on their fucking eyes and right. starving to death. Keep in mind that Ethiopia is, is, a, is a big country full of a lot mm-hmm. of people. And it's not the same everywhere you go. Generalizations cannot be made about Mm -hmm. Ethiopia, okay? They have cities. Addis Ababa is a metropolis, right? Mm -hmm. So so keep that in mind. Whenever whenever anyone takes control of Ethiopia, they can sit there and be good 
and pretend like nothing's happening when out in their country darker shit is happening. Right. Okay. Mm. And it's easy for, for their leaders to ignore. It just is. It's easy for them to ignore. Well, like like you were saying, there's multiple uh, cultures and uh, uh, race religions, what have you, going on there. And you also have the different landscape right. of, of the country. So It's insanely diverse. Yeah, uh, just looking at, at the map on Google Maps is just mind-boggling <laughs> yeah. to me. Like how... I mean, there's so many leaders that are like, the idea of like banding everybody together under one flag, that kind of thing, where it's like, man, there's so much shit going on. Like, to oversimplify any of this yeah. means you are wrong. Yes. Right. Yes. So that's why I'm, I'm like struggling to tell the oh, story I because, yeah. because uh, like, we could be here all day talking about each, each, each group's struggle. Okay. And mm-hmm. we're going to get in more into this later. But but we could be here all day. And and the point is, is I'm not trying to be an end-all, be-all. I just want you to understand what happens post Haile Selassie, okay? Right. Because September 12th, 1974, the Derg take Haile Selassie. They they Because he was moved from his palace to a more modest estate where they kept a good eye on him. And then they were like, hey, you come with me. They were like... It, it was sort of a, a, a Louis moment, like, in the French Revolution, where he goes, if... Haile Selassie said something like this. If the revolution is for the people, then I support it. He is quoted as saying that. If it's okay. for the people, then I do support it. But and they were like... Ha- not have my dick and balls cut off. Yeah, well, and they were like, well, anyway, he was ingloriously taken away from from his seat of power in a... VW bug, and there was the last picture ever taken of him of being shoved into a V like a white V dub. He finally got groovy, and he's waving. And they see you later, guys. I'm off to be. Oh groovy. no, he wasn't waving to anybody. Like like, uh, I I wonder if the reason why he said that was like as a last ditch attempt to yeah, be maybe. like, don't fucking kill me, no, please. No, no, yeah. no. I think it it it's what there there's a disconnect of what he believed what Ethiopia was and what all of the people of Ethiopia well, believed as well. Like the there, idea- there's just a disconnect. Sure. He he believed it should be this. It ought to be that, right? Right. And they're like, well, I could get on board with that if you would actually fucking treat me like what you're talking about. To yeah. the UN. But that's not fucking what's happening here. Yeah. And so... You can say that all fucking day long, but it doesn't ring true for me, his, right? Um, and it never has. Right. So his his speech to the UN to me implies that he does understand how complex these things are. But 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 that these things are difficult. But he's still trying to do this, and then not understanding why it fails. Well, because he's still the Lion of Judah. Mm. You know what I mean? He's still that, and he still believes that. And that's something that, that can't be lost on us, is that he still believes these things, you know. And so when they drove him away and he wasn't seen or heard from ever again, people were, people were like, well, we never saw him die or anything like that. And the dirt right. just said, he's dead, <clears throat> right? So it he's is, still alive. It is, <laughs> some people refuse to believe he's dead. So he's uh, son of Sam. He's, I've he's never seen Haile Selassie and Batman in the same place at the same time. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, or Spider Man, or Spider Man. I mean, Superman. Yeah, that one time. Yeah, there's that one time. It is. uh, You went. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. It is uh, widely believed that General Mengistu Hila Mariam of the Derg, who arose to be the leader of the Derg, maybe even himself personally, at least he ordered the strangulation of Hila Selassie again, ignominiously. uh, You know. In a, in a fucking cell. Mm-hmm. Uh, in the dark, with no one there. Oh, so Haile Selassie uh, uh, Epstein himself. <laughs> in a lot of ways, okay. yes. <laughs> oh, Only the, the conspiracy's true in in, the, in this one. In this one. Uh, I don't buy into conspiracy theories unless there's proof. I believe um, that there's a conspiracy theory as far as vaccines are concerned. Chris? Uh, that is my, why... <laughs> my belief no is that there's a conspiracy to keep people ignorant... So that they will vote against their best interests. 
uh, we're gonna we're gonna talk about this in a spooky season episode. Oh, sorry, Zach, you won't be a part of that. Oh, well, well, we're gonna talk about this later. Yes, we will. Anyway, yeah. What followed after the power vacuum of Hylas Lossi being gone was something called the Red Terror. It was a horrific time in this country because. Anyone that didn't agree with the Derg, of course, was put down mm-hmm. because you can't understand our great vision now, right? It's all about <laughs> how people are, are viewed, way, right? The the cruelty of the old leader is over. Let a new wave of cruelty. Yeah. I've had it up to here with these visionaries. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And Never trust a visionary. And 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 the war. Been about Elon Musk for years. And, and the oh. war in Eritrea er, continued. That. Uh, because the Dergs still considered Eritrea a part of Ethiopia, and they were bringing, of course, the the Leninist ideals to that country as well. It was an extremely dark time, fraught with with war, fraught with uh, people being drugged from their homes, questioned, monitored, another famine in, in the 80s. It was an extremely dark time. Something I also want to... Uh, uh, mention the the history of Ethiopia going forward is sort of the attack of the acronyms. There there's so many acronyms, but I'm gonna try to make sense of them here for you. Okay. It's like government organizations in Marvel. It's like uh Kathy acronyms. <laughs> that, right? geez. Yeah. that was even funnier than what I said. Yeah, what right. I said was fucking solid gold. It was solid gold. And a Marvel reference, uh, so I was a fan. Yeah, thank you. Now, keep in mind, during this whole time, there are still patriots who fought the Italians that are alive. Like, people like Ross Imro, he's mm-hmm. still alive. At first, he was down with the Dirk. He was like, yeah, we gotta fix something I'm about this country. Dirt, we gotta do do something. He disavowed, like, a few things. And, and he lived until 1980 just watching his country crumble. And he was like, I can't believe it all came to this. Like... You know, road paved to hell is in good intentions, intentions yeah. right? Yeah. And he, he probably quoted his enemies and went, yeah. "Mamma mia!" But did Jesus, but, <laughs> Jesus Christ! Wait, but did the Derg actually pave the roads? I mean, no, God they probably did the opposite. Well, uh, sounds like the Italians paved the roads. Some of the roads, yes. Yeah. Let's let's not give them some full credit. Roads. Let's not give them credit here. Yeah. And it was with marinara sauce and meatballs. So yeah, they weren't the best roads, but yeah. you're welcome but they were anyway. Delicious, yeah. God. Now stay with me here. Ugh. Okay? Stay with me. Now each large group that was against the Derg, because everyone didn't like the Derg, they wanted they actually wanted a, a, a democracy the where Derg they, sounds bad. Yeah, yeah. It, I was gonna say it sounds like the bad guys from like a fantasy novel. They're it's, they're bad guys. Let's make like, no mistake. You know what this is? Is, is it like, spelled like a funeral dirge? D E R G. It sounds okay, like dirge. no, because like it's like yeah. a dirge. Like, yeah, I think that's why it sounds bad. Yeah, but um, it's like halfway through a Final Fantasy game where you beat the guy you think is the bad boss, the big right. boss, and then the and then the dirg shows up. Yeah, and you're like, oh no, he was just working for the dirg. Yeah. <laughs> so so the dirg, the dirg. If you didn't 100, percent if you're not 100 percent on board, fuck you, right? Which so means you're dead. Almost even worse than Hyla Selassie in a lot of ways. Because at least Hyla Selassie, at the end of the day, the best you can say for him is that he was trying to pass progressive things, but they were failing because of his system that he re- he himself refused to get rid of. So right. basically everyone was like, this guy's fucking up. He was caught we're in a whirlpool. taking world him pool. out, and in that, a worse person takes Yeah, him. the power vacuum was filled with the, with these new work. guys being like, it's now, my way or the highway. Yeah. Now let me show you what a highway we, is in a book. In 20 years when we do an Afghanistan Now episode. Yeah. All of these, all of these groups, usually drawn along ethnic lines, mm-hmm. they all didn't like the Derg, but they all had their own ideas of what shit was going to look like after the Derg was gone. Some of them were, were for democracy. Some of them were straight up like, no, we're socialists, but we, we ain't you. Right? So, and that's something that's lost on the West as well, where it's like, oh, socialist, you must mean communist. Yeah. Right. And when I say co- that communist is an umbrella, right. right? Leninist is its own thing. And their brand, the Derg's brand of communism was Leninism 
and make no mistake about that. Mm -hmm. And if you don't make a distinction between those things, you don't know your history, and you may as well shut the fuck up when we talk about well, this the, shit. The God damn left right. in general being the let's change thing I, things idea is so drastically different from like every single group of people. Right. Yes. Like absolutely. that's the thing is that there is no I'm just, the left. I'm just saying change society a bit. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know what I mean? Anyway, anyway, so all these groups start start popping up and 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 they are at least fighting the dorg but they also have their own agendas. And you have to keep that in mind. They have their own agendas, okay? Now let's go through these here. The most the most prominent one that we need to address is the EPLF or the ELF, right? This is the Eritrean Liberation Front or the Erit later it would become the Eritrean People's Liberation this one, Front. This makes me again okay. want to reference later. Uh, Monty Python and the Life of Brian. Oh no, this is this it's it gets better, my friend. Okay. It gets better. Okay, so uh, that that's the most important one. That is the one that that uh, they're fighting for Eritrean independence so, right, against so elf. Ethiopia. Mm -hmm. Elf. Yep, yep. 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 Elf. The ELF. There's documentaries put out that you can watch, made by the Eritrean Liberation Front. So take what they say with the 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 notation that this is also propaganda. I mean, right. That bias. Yeah. So so keep this in mind. Maybe Everybody like six or has seven grains of salt. Everybody has propaganda, right? So try, try to be objective when you view these things, okay? And it's difficult in this part of the world, but I, I would challenge you to do so. The next important one to this, to this particular story and going forward is the TPLF, okay? This is the Tigray People's Liberation Front, mm -hmm. okay. okay? That's Tigray. That's the most northern province of Ethiopia, Right on the border, S seeing the pattern, with with yeah. Eritrea, okay. Yeah. Right on the right on the border. And then okay? you got the People's Front of Judea. <laughs> Sorry, you have the OLF, oh. the Oromo Liberation Front. Mm -hmm. Okay, mm -hmm. that's sort of in the middle, right? There's many of these, and I'm just gonna rush through the rest of these because I can't sit here all day. Okay, and we have the, the rest. We have the WSLF, <laughs> the ALF, the SLF, the ONLF. And the umbrella, because they would combine, okay, and I'm giving you broad strokes here, they would combine to fight the Derg, they would realize that they all have a common enemy, you know, the, mm -hmm. the enemy of my enemies. Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Can they I would all combine, they I'm would all combine, they would all combine under a sort of banner of the Ethiopian People's Revolutionary Democratic Front, the EPRDF, mm -hmm. okay, for a time they would do this. So, uh... That's that's poor marketing skills. I really wish that they went with the RAD under that whole banner, which would be the rad awesome dudes. I yeah. like that. Yeah. I mean, come on. Yep. Uh, we should, we can still rad. change the show's name. I mean, you know. Oh yeah, I'm done with this history boy show. Yeah, <laughs> time to be rad awesome dudes. I will say, it, to the defense of the ALF, they just wanted to get home to Melmac. <laughs> that's the, that's the Afar Liberation Front, by the way, the ALF. I thought it was did, alien life form. Did they oh. eat cats too? Yeah, they yeah. love cats. Love the family. Gee, I don't know, guys. <laughs> yeah. no, uh, no, it's not that. Was that your elf impression? That was my elf impression. That was uh, Jerry doing Jerry doing elf. Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> it's meta. Thank uh, you for bringing that back. But what we're going to talk about is the ELF, the Eritrean Liberation Front, and the TPLF, the Tigrayan People's Liberation Front. What happened was, is they all sort of realized in their, since 1950, some of these people have been fighting into the 70s, into the 80s. It's like, oh, Halas lossie has gone, meet the new boss, same as the old boss, mm -hmm. kind of a deal. We want to be, we want to be independent, and we're not going to stop until we're independent. Now, the Derg would, would call the ELF bandits and raiders yeah. and say that they're committing human rights violations in in the war, right? Pot kettle black? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> because this is propaganda, of course. The thing is is uh they both did. They both did. You you ask some of these people uh living in the middle of goddamn nowhere that were raided by both armies, which side is the good guy and point a camera at them? 
whoever's calling the shots, they'll say, yep, that guy's the good guy. Because they're just fucking tired of it. Right. They're tired of people coming to their town, burning it to the ground, and raping everybody, cutting their faces and shit, because it's some war that they are caught in the middle of. Right. You know what I'm saying? So Jesus like, fucking Christ. People don't fuck, like, it, it's hard to get a good sense, unless you talk to somebody who was actually there or has family there. They're like, you I know. just want to raise these yaks, man. They're like, dude, just leave actually, me alone. I, w- I want to actually have a field where I can feed my fucking family. Yeah. And there's a famine going on. Don't know if you noticed. There was a fucking drought. I'm having a hard time fucking just growing crops. And here you guys are talking about how you're intellectuals and you're and the state is going to take care of of me now. And I must grow food for the state somehow and give it give it to the uh, country now. It seems like the same thing that Hyla Selassie was doing to me. You know, and and where they're taking the fucking food away from me, right? So it, at the same time, like what the ELF was doing in their part of conquered lands, and granted, this is another piece of propaganda. In certain areas, it is true that people were being fed and taught to read, and and infrastructure was happening, and good things were happening in the wake of the ELF forces. Infrastructure rules. And and the thing is, is it's not true everywhere because they, of course, were. It, it is war, right? Mm-hmm. War destroys everything that is fucking good I on know. this fucking planet. Like infrastructure, right? And which rules? But in the in their wake, they're they're claiming that they're they're able to actually fix shit, and they did a little bit, right? Yeah. They did a little bit. The truth is more gray than than is being gr- given credit for here. Were, were they kind of like the the? Like the shitty kid in high school who did the bare minimum of their their homework or something, and it's like, see, but I did do my homework. I not I'm not lying. No, well, Zach, no, I, I'm, uh, no. I'm a little offended that you're bringing that up about me. Chris was like, <laughs> uh, I won't say that. I'm just kidding. I didn't do homework in high school. <laughs> I would say they did it in areas that were key to propaganda. To pass, is what you're saying. Yeah, uh, it's it's like... Um, D's for diploma, brother. It's like when you clean your place just enough so it doesn't <laughs> look completely awful when you have guests over. Chris. God yes. damn it, Tyler. <laughs> you sweep a lot of shit under the rug, Yeah, is what you do. I got the one rug. And there's... Don't. You <laughs> don't. 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 <laughs> like, I'm pretty sure there's a third cat under there. Yeah. <laughs> I think John might still be alive. I don't know. Genocide is under there. Yeah. Oh, oh yeah. no. Which is happening here. Because, of course, if you're fighting people that are of uh, certain ethnicities and putting them down because they're of these ethnicities, that, my friend, is textbook genocide. That's the literal definition of genocide. So, so that's what is happening here. Genocide is happening here. It is ugly and disgusting. And mm-hmm. anyone that tells me that something good was coming from it while it was happening, I do by instinct, don't believe them 100%. Yeah. I believe, like, what they're showing me might be true, but that is anecdotal evidence, my friend. You're showing me also one thing. You, You're showing me one thing of good things that you did. One thing. Also, when you say, like, yeah, but they did this one thing, it's forgiving all the darkness. It's, that they did. it's anecdotal evidence. This is the, the curse of anecdotal evidence. Yes. This is why this is a logical fallacy. You can't use that in a fucking argument Hitler because... Hitler built the Autobahn. Yeah, yeah. Oh, great. So, Wait, yeah. did he? I don't know. I've Something heard like, that. I've, uh, I don't know. Don't quote me on that one. Made made the trains run on time is a constant That's a, I, I should have said that one because I know that people do say it's that. It's not fucking true. Anyway, but this is what's going on, and it is ugly, and it happens. Again, the Aromos have been fighting since 1950 till now, and, they, and they've never stopped. Eritreans, uh, since 19, the early 1960s until now... It went all through the 80s. There's another famine that happened. And the world was was horrified. This place is lousy. And we, we grew up with images on our TV showing, look how horrible this is. Give to the scam fucking uh, yeah. charity where none of the money goes to these starving so kids. So we're getting the part where right. you know what I'm watching. The, the, the propaganda is like a part of like the, of our experience in a way, yeah. well, you know, yeah. your parents saying like finish all the food on your plate. There's there's kids starving in Africa right. is literally a result, yeah, of the dirge, which were horrible. The dirge, yep. the dirge. Sorry, fuck. Thank, the dirge, uh, the dirge. 
But I will say I heard anecdotally that they also invented rollerblades, so it's not all bad. Well, well what I'm talking about yeah, the, is the point. is the ELF. Yeah, the ELF I uh, like claims ELO. to have done all of these uh, all of these things. Uh, but, oh wait, but, oops, yeah, you're right. The ELF they invented rollerblades. Uh, and and here's the thing: is the ELF starts as good guys, right? They start as they're fighting for 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 liberation and everything. But war is fucking ugly. Okay, it's never not ugly. All right, it's so, like the ugliest thing. Yeah. So so war crimes are committed. Okay, and again, all of this deserves an episode in of itself. I'm just I just want to make sure you guys understand this because at the present moment there is a war. And a famine going on amongst all this COVID shit that is going on in Ethiopia right now. And I just want you Are to you understand. Are you fucking kidding me? Why? Why it is happening now? I want you to understand. And mm. this, will, this will tell you exactly why. I could be accused of generalizing, and they would be right. People that would accuse me of generalizing would be correct, because I can't Scary. speak to everything, right? Yes, yeah, so, you're generalized. Yes. Uh, you know what I'm going to say? You're not generalizing. <laughs> you would be wrong. I am wrong. <laughs> uh, I'm also very dumb. In 1991, the Derg okay. was finally defeated. Now, something I kind of forgot to mention that shouldn't be a surprise to you is that the ELF was funded by the United States. And the Derg, of course, was funded by the Soviets. Huh. Right? And, 91, uh, yeah. And uh, we what happened... Dub. Yeah, what happened was is that, of course, they lost their Soviet... Backing in 91, mm-hmm. not that it meant that much to begin with, and the United States had a bigger foothold. Also, the Soviets switched sides at a certain point during the Ogaden War because the Somalis decided that they wanted to take the Ogaden for themselves because it was Somalia, after all. There there's Somalis living there, so there was wars literally on all sides. And famine on all sides. It was the most hostile fucking place for for war for Jeez. for at least three or four decades, right? And the thing is, is that the leaders never once listened to the people. No one ever got a chance to actually voice what they wanted to happen in Ethiopia. No one got a chance to do that. They never got to vote. On who became mm-hmm. the leader. Not once. They never got a say in how they wanted their government to be run. Not at any point. So even when the Derg was was defeated and, and this sort of umbrella group of the TPLF, they, they, they were the, the strongest member of the group, uh, let's say. They came out on top. When the, when the Derg was dissolved, the TPLF w- was the strongest member. Right mm-hmm. of, of this group, so they took control. They 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 decided that they wanted a democracy, oh. democracy in name only. Ugh. Oh, because well, what happened? Literally it, not a democracy. It was the TPLF. It was the the Tigra- It was Tigrayans taking over, right? And Ugh. and and the thing is, is they had a smaller population mm-hmm. in the north, most affected by the famine, one of the poorest areas of Ethiopia, and now they had all the control. Right, and they it's looked after, metal. and they looked after Tigray. Can you, in a lot of ways, can you blame them? No, no. But that does not constitute a governing body for everyone else. That's exactly the problem. So here's the problem we run into. Oh, the one problem. Does Ethiopia? Is it? Should Ethiopia itself, as this um, uh, as this area of all of these people that want independence, should it even be allowed to exist? I mean, you're asking me. No, <laughs> I mean, I'm asking the ether. It's, I, I, it's I, I know rhetorical. it's a rhetorical question, but like to me, that's kind of on par with should should the state of Israel exist versus Palestine. In the sense that it's just different people. Well, well, let's. We're gonna solve that, that's all a different, these questions that's a, tonight, gentlemen. No, no, no. That's yeah. a different. <laughs> that's a different story. The but, four smartest people on the planet. I, I just want you. I want you to think about it. In that case, it. then cut my thing out because it might. No, make no, it's sound okay. Weird. It's okay. A lot of people might bring up that point, and I want to draw that line. And I want to say, think about it from both sides here. I want. I because we are outsiders. We're fair mm-hmm. We're outsiders. Think about it from both points here. Think about it from the people that want 
through our lens, through the capitalist colonial lens, let's not fucking beat around right. the bush here. Yes. Right. They want stability through that lens. And that lens, stability through that lens means Ethiopia. Okay? Mm-hmm. And then through mental decolonization, through actual decolonization and independence of all of these nations, that maybe they can have something different apart from that lens. Okay? And that's why people are still fighting today. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Right? So during this time, something else that we should know is once the Derg went away, Eritrea got their independence. And the leader of the the ELF, the PLF, became the leader of Eritrea. And there was much rejoicing, but it was Yay. freedom. It, it was <laughs> independence without Money freedom, right? Right. Because he, there was no constitution, mm-hmm. and he became a dictator of Eritrea. And it's called the North Korea of Africa now. His name is Isaiah Afwerki. No shit. And, and you might know him. He, he's in the news because he... He doesn't there's there's limited internet connection there. Uh, anything that comes out of Eritrea now is newsworthy because so little comes out of Eritrea now. Mm-hmm. It is it is the North Korea of Africa. of Africa. I'm, I'm sure that it's- except except the one thing that this is something important for us to know in the West is that it's not a leftist movement that per Afwerki there. This is a democratic movement. Uh, who wanted originally a democracy to put Afwerki there that has failed. So that shows you that it's not just communism that fails, it's also democracy that fails. Mm -hmm. And don't tell me one is better than the other, okay? It's one population that's primed for it than another. And if you want to delineate it that way, fair. But you want to tell me one's inherently better than the other uh, because one is more prone to authoritarianism, you're simply wrong because you don't know enough about the world. Well, I think authoritarianism is always really what the issue is. And yeah, it and it can from, exist. It can come from anywhere. It, it can, can come exist, from any form. It yeah. can exist in under any uh, veil, I mean, under any veil. I mean, look at Stalin veneer. versus Hitler. Yeah. Right. Look at. Yeah. Yeah. It can come under any disguise. Every form of government right? can be, can be totalitarian, totalitarian. Can be authoritarian. Yeah. It can be that. Yes. And it is that in Eritrea. It is mm-hmm. that to this day in Eritrea. So um, do, you, do you know if Eritrea is one of the few uh, comrades or uh, uh, friends of North Korea because of that same mentality? Or that if they just saw... What North Korea has they done and be, completely damn recognizes scam. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Thank you. Yes and no. Uh, the thing is, is a lot of these countries, including Libya uh, with Gaddafi, have recognized that these superpowers in the United States have been meddling in these countries for a long time. Yeah. And why is it that the United States gets to have nuclear weapons, but no one else does? Right. It almost seems like one kid is keeping, you know, yeah, all, oh, all, all the all the weapons, is saying, "Don't worry about it." You know, it's like now, now wait a minute. If if you, if you put yourself in those shoes, if you were that country, wouldn't you see yourself among the others without the fucking big stick? Mm-hmm. Wouldn't you see yourself as one of those? Right. I think I think some of their rhetoric and not all of it but some of their rhetoric Gaddafi has said this and so has uh, the Kim dynasty is that hey how come we can't have nukes you have nukes Iran has said this too I'm not Nobody saying it's a good thing I'm nukes. for disarmament right yeah, me too. Right. but but the thing is is uh, they're not wrong right no they're not they're not wrong I again we need to take them apart is what we need to do yeah. we need to get rid of them is what we need to do but uh, they're not wrong when they say, no, I'm going to have nukes, you have nukes. Fuck you. They're not wrong when they say that. That's the reason why we don't, well, that's the reason why we can't get rid of our nukes, because those guys want nukes, and if mm-hmm. we don't have nukes, they're going to build nukes. Then they'll this have is why nukes. the United States needs to just keep making these big blockbuster movies that the entire world enjoys, and then that will be our nukes. If you go to war against us, no yeah. more Avengers. Basically, and for good reason, both sides accuse each other of war crimes, and they're not unfounded, mm-hmm. right? 
And when the TPLF had control, they ignored everyone else and did what was good for Tigray. Like you do. Yeah. No one liked that either. Even under the guise of quote-unquote democracy, which was one-party rule even even still. And you don't want people voting against you? No. Well, it's like even... Well, no it, one's voting. It's like... That's my point. It's like... Yeah. You're at an orgy, right? And you gotta... Even if you're trying to kind of only do it with one person, you still gotta do it with everybody else the same. Because as soon as you start paying too much attention <laughs> to that oh, one chick, everyone's gonna know that you're only there to bang that one person. And you're not there for like, everyone else. You're like, yeah, you have a crush on what, what's their face? And I'm, and you're like, oh no, yeah, embarrassing. <laughs> I've been banging this one chick all night. Yeah, and, it's and now like, she knows I like her. Yeah, you gotta be, you gotta be just yeah. fucking. You gotta be with every equality, every, equality. <laughs> you know, it's the same when you're at a bar with a bunch of people and there's one girl there you're like, you don't really want to like be talking to her all night because you're gonna yeah. be like freaking out. Yeah, same thing. <laughs> So yeah, the, the <laughs> I like how me and you have two completely different analogies. <laughs> <laughs> the the TPLF uh, turned against their one-time ally, the ELF. They had border disputes with Eritrea mm-hmm. and continued the war through the 1990s. No one liked that, of course, because uh, they're just continuing war. To say it's it, it decimated populations is uh, an understatement. Mm-hmm. An understatement. War, war is is hor- horrific. I, I don't think I need to go any further than that. It's horrific. Uh, but what happened was is uh, y- you know generations went and fought and died because when there's a famine and a war on, you either decide, well, I'm gonna am I gonna live here with my family and maybe starve to death, or am I going to join the rebels and maybe get some food because the rebels are some organization or book a right? flight to Las Vegas. Vegas, not, not that baby. easy. Yeah, not that easy. <laughs> not or that as easy. I like to call it, lost wages. Nice, nice. And considering uh, Tigray was at the helm during the 1990s, and with these border disputes with Eritrea, it didn't endear them <laughs> to the Eritreans. There's a new guy in charge of Ethiopia right mm-hmm. now. His name is Abi Ahmed, and it looked for a second that. Shit was going to look up. But he formed basically his own party, and Tigray didn't like that, and they wanted to separate. And so they became separatists. And what's happening right now, as we speak, there is a war happening between Ethiopia, Tigray, and now Eritrea's gotten involved. And the reason why Eritrea's gotten involved in helping Ethiopia now is because when... Eritrea and Ethiopia were at odds, the Tigrayans were in charge, mm-hmm. right? So they have no problem invading yeah. on the border, right right there. And they've been involved against the Oromos and, and all of that, right? So in 2018, or yeah, in 2018, Abiy Ahmed, he was like, hey, all is forgiven between me and, b- between Ethiopia and, and Eritrea. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. And they're like, yeah, yeah, totally. And he won the Nobel Peace Prize in 2019 oh, for, for nice. ending that for ending that animosity. Which, by the way, uh, never confuse an Eritrean for an Ethiopian. Uh, never do that, especially as a Ferengi. Never do that. Because to be honest, wrong. I'm not going to assume. Yeah, do not do that. <laughs> Don't do that. Uh, I you're gonna be like, like to be honest, I'm never gonna go there. So, I wish I could. It is a beautiful country. It really is. Uh, they have not had a chance in the 20th century to do anything with their country, unfortunately, with what has been placed upon their shoulders. Outlook isn't very good because the thing is, is no one can agree. Their their government, all of their leaders have failed them. Uh, no one can sit down and actually talk without uh, military intervention. Basically, people in, in Tigray right now are, are horrific, horrifically dying and causing a human rights catastrophe. So even though uh, uh, Abiy Ahmed won the Nobel Peace Prize, he's also accused of human rights violations. All of these places, and, and basically you have ec- like people on, on one side that look at it through 
the lens that I was talking about that are saying that if everyone is independent, if all these groups are independent, then it would further further make things unstable. <laughs> it right. further destabilize right. the, uh, the region and all of their neighbors. It further do that. But what that assumes is that these people, with, uh, with all of their lived experiences and shared PTSD, it assumes that they are unable to govern themselves. Right. It's something to, uh, that's very important that, that we in the West need to realize is that there are, there are two options, right? One leads to more war, one to maybe more destabilization. But here's the thing is you're only looking at it through that lens. Right. Does that make sense? Right, mm-hmm. yeah. Yeah. Okay. If we don't have a leader in there to force all these guys to hang out, we're never going to get a Dave and Buster's in there. <laughs> and I think that that's the thing that we really need to be looking at. We won't at. have a subway on every block. Yeah. Uh, no, uh, I mean, it doesn't have to be a subway. It could be a Quiznos. <laughs> uh, Quiznos gone, man. Quiznos uh, will never be gone in my heart. The... The rest it, of the world... It was superior to Subway. It was in every way. I don't know how it lost. It had that weird gerbil ad thing. Yeah. The worst part of it is, is that if, if you think that that America's polarized and, and, and separated right now, I mean, what's happening here is just so much more so. And... What's happening in here Ethiopia. is is yeah is a is a yeah in Ethiopia is a stark is a stark reminder that these deep divisions and not being able to talk at all with each other leads only to war, right? And I was talking about that Groovy song, and there's a specific song I'm thinking of. I I don't think anybody knows what I'm talking about, but by this point, and I was thinking like I'm talking like nineteen. 19- I don't know when it came out. Piano Man. Is the groovy <laughs> song? No, no, no. Different song. Okay. Now we have Piano Man. Yeah. Why though they, they don't just not karaoke Piano Man together? <laughs> now that would solve and, all their problems. A lot would. like a lot like uh, us buying a shirt or something or changing our profile pictures to to stop was, the war in Tigray. That's gonna make everyone set their rifles down. When you Billy Joel together, that's a bond. Yes. Billy Joel is the glue. <laughs> uh, the thing is, is uh, all praise our Lord and Savior Billy Joel. Everyone is still fighting. The Ethiopian government at this point is refusing to recognize that there is a big problem uh, within their country that's existed mm-hmm. since I, I'm at least the mid 1800s. That is a change in thinking that the countries of the rest of the world need to come to terms with, need to figure out, because it's going to take help from the outside. It's going to, uh, especially among the diaspora, the, the, the multiple diaspora of Ethiopia around the world mm-hmm. to sort of come to terms with so, before um, anything can actually... But the ghost of Haile Selassie still haunts Ethiopia. Oh, he's so spooky. He haunts him. <laughs> Because their leaders have failed, and because of his grandiose dreams seem so distant now, a one Ethiopia seems almost unattainable now, let alone Pan-Africanism, seems much further away. The dream of Pan-Africanism seems so much further away than it ever did. It's so much more complicated than, than just saying, we should all be one. It's like, oh yeah, that's all great, but... <clears throat> That that's not taking into account the history, and right. that's what we're talking about. So and what you're saying is that if every human being on the planet could karaoke Billy Joel's Piano Man at the exact same that's time, that's what you're saying, Chris. But what if? He, <laughs> but I'm, I'm reading. I'm, I'm, I'm reading between the lines. I'm going to take what Chris is saying and add. I'm going to tweak it slightly. Okay. Everybody in the world is singing Piano Man, and they're on mushrooms. Okay. And just reset the whole game, man. Well, and maybe we Full should. Res- and honestly, maybe, maybe we should read karaoke piano. Man, no, maybe maybe we should. You know, maybe listen. I, this is such a stupid answer, but maybe we should listen more more to the Rastafarians and and take the 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 marijuana as the Eucharist. All of us. They're the only ones gets it. Sit down, 
and smoke a doobie and it. fucking just talk about your hopes and fears. I've been talking about getting open. groovy this whole time. <laughs> I'm not. That's not. I'm just. Listen. Apparently, there, you there don't understand options. what I meant by getting groovy. There are options. The option is Ethiopia exists. And these people continue to fight. There, there will be war. Mm. There will be famine. Because climate change isn't going anywhere. Oh, yeah. No, we're These fucked. famines, these droughts, they're only going to get worse. Yes. And if they don't, they don't get something together, it will only get worse. Yeah, but Mitch McConnell has friends that or, benefit off of that. Or, and I'm only going to use the opinions of others here. This is not my opinion. But others have said... If these places are allowed to be independent, especially places like Tigray, which is the one of the most poor, pl- the poorest place in all of Ethiopia, it could spell disaster for that new nation because mm. they don't have any infrastructure, economic infrastructure to deal with that. Granted, I am looking through it through that Western lens during the early days of the ELF, what they did is they set up farming cooperatives. It's the only way that these things were able to succeed is that these cooperatives were put in place to feed local families. No one was rich, and no one was poor, and they liked it. That sounds like socialism. Mm -hmm. Maybe it sounds like Marxism. But, uh, the point is, instead of it going to a state to then funnel out to everything else, right? It would be more on a localized level. Mm -hmm. Now, (laughs) it worked in certain areas. I'm not saying it's going to work everywhere because generalizations never work with What about areas that are unable to uh, create as much... uh, Like the Ogaden. Or the Ogaden. Yeah, they're unable to create as much uh, economic growth because of how the arc, uh, agricultural si- situations are there, yep. the mineral situations there, certain people and the who live ideological there. Okay. reasons. Yeah, so there. these people are unable to create as much growth as people who are in this area where mm-hmm. they're over a fucking diamond mine or anything. So now these people are in power, right? So do you get what I'm saying? Is this I, like Yeah, yeah. So so what you're saying is, is what about the people in these areas that can't grow food? Yeah. The ideal way would be to get everyone together and say who wants to be Ethiopia, who doesn't want to be Ethiopia. And if you're going to be independent, then be independent. But if people vote to stay in, then they vote to stay in. But the point of the matter is, is no one has ever been allowed to have their say. It's a bit of a Brexit situation. No, 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 it's not. No, I get what I mean. I meant what I meant was, yeah. Sorry. They've never voted on who their leader's going to be. Not once. Never never been able to do that. No one in Ethiopia has ever once voted on who their leader's going to be. Because everything no one's was by... ever voted on policy. Not once. Right, because everything was by divine right. Well, well, or, or hey, or I'm coup. in power, shit's destabilized, I'm going to fix it. I alone can fix it. Right. You're like... Yeah. That's what's happening in Eritrea. That's why it's a failed state. Well, do you think that... Now um, that's what's happening in Ethiopia. Do you think and that, that people are like, it this, is a failing state. We're in a real state. bad situation right now. We don't have the time for democracy, so I'm going to fix everything. But they keep saying yes. that. No, Haile Selassie said that. They keep saying that. How long are we going to sit with the same old song and dance of war and famine? Right. How long are generations of people going to go to war and die for what? Right. For what? If people don't get the fucking capacity for self-determination, if you don't have that, then it will be the same thing over and over and over again. They've said it's always been Ethiopia, so let's keep it e- Ethiopia and let's hang on to these old old myths. Because right. it is a myth. What we've just talked about proves that it's a myth. That that oh we've never been conquered it's it's the old Ethiopia we've never we've never been conquered or or colonized that's a myth the British the Italians this is a myth okay the Ethiopians themselves okay have have perpetuated this myth because they've colonized other people going all the way back 
to the mid 1800s. Right. Okay? It's rectifying the it's rectifying history and coming to terms with history and making peace with history. That that is the only way out of this. Mm-hmm. Now, Hannah Selassie's death and body are a mystery. We don't know if he was actually strangled by the Derg or leaders of the Derg or not. We don't know if he died in prison or not. I've seen really. a lot of movies. If you don't see the body, yeah, they're still uh, alive. He's coming back he, uh, in at least the third movie. Yeah. Which uh, we haven't seen yet. Uh, Mengistu bragged that he buried Hylas Lossi's body underneath an outhouse. Oh. Uh, during the Derg reign. Mengistu's still alive. He was charged in absentia for war crimes and genocide. Got uh, him. But he is in Zimbabwe right now. Mm. That's where he lives now. For um, his nicest time here. And I'm he, sure he's he is really a, sorry about those war crimes. Well, uh, there are members of, of... There are people in Ethiopia that might even want him back now from, from people I've spoken to. Um, Jesus. Not saying that's a good thing. But there's got to be somebody that, that moderates, that, that uh, does something to help all of this come together. Because this can't continue forever, or it will just be a mess. Um, this war needs to end. It does. It needs to end fucking now. Again, it's hard to tell exactly what's happening, because not a lot of news is coming out of this area. Uh, journalists are being put down, and no leaders can agree on exactly the reasons for this or who is committing the war crimes. Well, I think it's because the 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 lying fake news media, you know, they just <laughs> spin whatever the yarn. The news network. Yeah, whatever, whatever, you know, whatever lies they need to do to, you know, sell, you know, whatever, you know. And so I think it, it sounds like the one thing they can all agree on is that the journalists have got to go. And I agree with <laughs> Well, them. that's what they've done. In Nove- uh, on November 5th, though, in the year 2000, they found... Hyla Selassie's body, and they gave no. him a small, somewhat hush Was it hush. under an outhouse? Um, it, see, it could have been at one point. And then somebody moved uh, it's the hard, It's hard to it's hard to pinpoint exactly, but they found quote unquote his body, and they were going to give him a funeral. And it was very hush hush. It was very um, quiet, but it was very much like a state funeral. Old patriots did show up to it. Mm-hmm. Um, there was. There was one Ferengi, one white guy that showed up and was like in the back and one like like old guy was like, move this dude to the front. And they're like, why? And it's like, he's a Ferengi and he has a camera and he might tell the rest of the world about what's happening here. Mm-hmm. And so he was like, he took some of the few precious images we have of Hylas Selassie's funeral that he never got in the year 2000. Um, Jesus, that's crazy. It, it was still passionate, and it was still looking towards this almost unattainable light of when when people were more united against a com- common enemy, uh, when people were more attuned to ideas such as Pan-Africanism. That's at least the nostalgia in their mind that they carry with them through this. But something that that seems indicative of the life and times of Ethiopia is what's going to happen to Ethiopia and Africa uh, 10 million years from now, is what they say. Because mm-hmm. it's on a, a, a fault line. On, right. On, on, it's on three tectonic plates. Much, and you like, can see much it. like the City of Angels. Yeah. Well, yeah. Well, th- uh, that's on one fault line. Yeah, this is I, on. This is where like two of them. I'm gonna meet. be honest. I'm aware it is a difference of fault line. Yeah, it's on two though, and it's right on the corner. So you can see where the mountain ranges are if you look at like a map on Google Earth. Okay. That that it's created all of this. A bit of a it, trifecta. It's, it's basically there's evidence of the landmass tearing itself apart, right on these faults. They've constantly been moving. They get earthquakes all the time. And uh, volcanic eruptions all the time. What's going to happen eventually, 10 million years, who knows if humanity will even exist by then. Probably Uh, not. But right through the middle of Ethiopia, it will take all of Africa to the side and there will be a new ocean in between that. And And that's where uh, humanity came from. No. uh, Again, 10 million years from now. uh, No, I meant... 
a new life form will emerge. Scaled oh, I don't horrible. Know. I don't know. <laughs> but uh, it, it seems ominous of the times mm-hmm. because eventually it will be actually physically divided. Yeah. And yeah. it it's insanely sad. And I, I can't I can't harp on that enough. I don't know. I, I I guess my reason for like doing this episode is that I've seen and heard people talk about Ethiopia and Africa, you know, all white people being mm-hmm. like, well, they just fucking get along. And it's like the same person that fucking rants on Facebook says this. Well, it's the same people you know in this I mean? country and it's like, like, just get a job or like, yeah, yeah, it's like I don't know, work. Yeah, it, it's like, oh, so you have some more useless fucking advice to give. Mm-hmm. I see. You know, so I, I just feel that if more people really understood without without dis, that that dismissive, well, it's complicated sort of sort of thing that they always throw out, that maybe they would have a little bit more compassion towards the subject, mm-hmm. I guess. And that's what we do here. We like to spread the knowledge to spread the empathy and the compassion like a smooth butter on toast oh. <laughs> like a well, jam yeah. like a like a like a preserve you know yeah. well and the reason why we're glib during these sort of dark subjects is not to make light of these dark subjects but is to make it approachable for you the listener yeah so you can understand cuz it is hard to understand these things it's fucking it is brutal, it is man. difficult and i'm glib during these things cuz we started out with like caligula and vlad the impaler and it was fun to make jokes and then jerry gets all <laughs> real every once in a while and what am i supposed to do <laughs> so i'm just saying folks at home feel sorry for me cuz it's hard to try yeah. to, to crack wise <laughs> when when this when the topic is genocide it's hard to crack wise when I'm just a white guy sitting in America. I mean, I understand because I'm in the yeah. exact same boat as you. Anyway, so am I. we are the History <laughs> Boys, everyone. Yes. Thank you so much for listening. I am Christopher Whedon. I'm Tyler Armantrout. I'm Zach Mack. And I am Jerry Nash. Thank you so much for listening again. Follow us on all the social medias on Facebook, on Twitter, on Instagram. Of course, we have a Patreon as well. And thank you to all of our Patreon members and Mr. Zach. Speaking of Patreon, we got a new Patreon pal. What? Everybody, give a warm welcome to Kyle. 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 Uh, he actually sent a message uh, to us, and uh, turns out he's also a Tacoma boy. Ooh. Very nice. So, very nice. And here's very... his address. You can visit him. <laughs> <laughs> Um, yeah, thank you so much, Kyle. That's super, super, super badass. Cool. Um, we, we love and appreciate you. Hope to, to see you on the Discord. A couple things that I think I should say really quickly. Uh, I, unfortunately, am going to be uh, stepping out of uh, the, the History Boys He's been fired. Uh, realm <laughs> for quite a bit. You, spooky you, season. You, you won't be hearing my my sultry, sexy voice uh, all throughout spooky season, all throughout November, and, and you will probably be telling probably that me and December. Tyler are not rock hard the entire time by witnessing Zach's visage <laughs> and the light that he gives. Him. <laughs> it's, it's true. Uh, it's, it's very true. We're just true. not gonna have the same energy, but we're, we'll do our best. Yeah, uh, we'll we'll get there to, together, but but separate. Mm-hmm. Okay. Like, yeah? No? I, I don't know. That line worked on my wife when I told her I was going out on tour. Anyway, yeah, so uh, you you won't be hearing from me for quite a bit. However, if you do sign up on uh, for our Patreon, there's a new channel that I've made called Tour Tales. Mm-hmm. And uh, it, it will just be me kind of uh, documenting my, my touring journey. I'm with very excited escapades. for that because I would like to see exactly where you are and why the fuck you aren't here. At, at all, all times. At all times. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. It's going to be great. Majority of the time, it's going to be me at the bottom of a bottle of Jameson. That's but, right. You know. Uh, so home home is where the heart's at, and my heart is in whiskey. Um, <laughs> uh, not not your dog, Tyler, yeah, yeah. but uh, maybe maybe one day. Uh, yeah, we'll, someday. We'll talk later. It depends on how much uh, Jameson you have. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> and how much whiskey James, uh, whiskey has, too. Yeah. yeah. So. How much Jameson you have, I'm, yeah, we get it. Consent is, is all I'm trying to trying to do. That's important. 
<laughs> yes, we have a lot of exciting stuff uh, coming for you. Uh, spooky season is mm. is coming for you. Got a lot of really exciting things planned for that. Hope you like getting of... this shit scared out of you because we're coming for you. Yeah, yeah. Coming. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Hold on uh, to your yeah. dookie. It's about to get spooky. <laughs> uh, fans, when you see that dark shape in the corner of your room and you're like, oh no, the, that's me. That's yeah. Chris. Yeah, I'm gonna be there. Eat I'm gonna be cho- there. You turn the lights. I'm fucking gone. <laughs> <laughs> Just eating a chocolate bar. I don't know. I, I don't know what you do when you're in somebody else's home. It's a crunch wrap that is obviously oh, a always off. a crunch wrap surprise. I see. I go to your home. I eat a crunch wrap supreme. You turn on the light, and he's gone. I'm gone, Scatters. baby. I would also uh, encourage you to listen to the free Aromeo podcast. Uh, they give you a lot of insights as to what is happening now in Ethiopia. And again, do your own research. Uh, I'm not an expert in this. We are not experts in this. Uh, but it is important for you to know about. It is important for everyone to know what a divided s- society can look like if we can't talk to each other. Mm-hmm. And I, it's hard. It's hard. I get it. But it, uh, this is why we tell you history. This is, this is the whole point. Yes. Uh, of telling of telling you histories to warn you uh, of the dangers of what could happen. I, I just have one last thing I want to say. I don't bring this up a lot, but uh, one of my m- massive heroes do- passed recently, oh, Norm yes. Macdonald. Um, I don't bring every every celebrity death up, uh, but that guy, man, I'm the biggest fan of him, and like my favorite joke of yeah. all. Time. I want to bring that up. I, I, I listened to it today while I was in the shower. Yeah, my favorite um, joke of all time was was a Norm Macdonald joke. And if you know joke. me, if you know me, you've heard this joke. Mm-hmm. Because it's my favorite joke of all time. Uh, YouTube, Norm Macdonald, moth joke, moth story. He told it on Conan yes. Bryant. The, apparently that moth joke is a, it's an old joke, but the way he spins it, fuck. It, you, oh my God. You're going to love it. It's the funniest thing I've ever heard. Yes. Uh, uh, and it really is a testament to how there is no comedian like Norm MacDonald. He, he was truly a once in a generation uh, Yeah, comedian. absolutely. And like, yeah. if you think my dry comedy is hilarious, uh, as <laughs> I'm sure you do, uh, it's only a testament to a tiny fraction of my ability to be yeah, I, a I, little I, like... Th- just a little bit a little like him. tiny little, like, fraction yeah. of a fraction of a cent. To be like him, yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Agreed. Uh, anyway, thank you very much. Uh, did I mention our, our email? Historyboyspodcast at gmail.com. Send us stuff. Uh, we always love hearing from you. Anyway, Mr. Zach. This is the last time I'm going to do it for the rest of the year. Love you, bye. Aww.